Good evening, everyone. I'd like to call this meeting to order. Welcome to our February 26th, uh, 2013 meeting. It is approximately 6.34 p.m. Uh, if we can have roll call, please. Mayor Cortez? Here. Councilmember Mesa? Here. Councilmember Silva? Here. Councilmember Peralta? Here. Councilmember Gonzalez? Here. We do have a quorum. We can, uh, I'd like to also acknowledge uh, members from the Taos County, uh, the county manager, uh, Mr. Steve Archuleta, Assistant Manager Rick Bellis, Commissioner Baroni, uh, Commissioner Blankenhorn, <laughs> and Commissioner Baroni is expected to be here shortly, and also our District Attorney Donald Gallegos. Welcome to our meeting. So, uh, Commissioner Blankenhorn, if we can have the honors to have you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you, Commissioner. <coughs> Next, we'll go to approval of the agenda. Is there any changes <coughs> or amendments to the agenda as presented? I have none, Mr. Mayor. <coughs> For the council, I, I just want to move item um, H, Public Works Department review to the end so that we can have the public hearing so that these uh, individuals that are here can, I don't think they need to be here for that, that portion. If that's okay with the count. Council, if uh, that's okay, I would entertain a motion to approve as amended. Excuse me, uh, Mayor, yes, Council so members? Yes, second. Before you approve, um, item 8C is also to be deleted. Um, Mr. Charles, Charlie Deans was not able to attend this event. 8D? C. 8C. 8C, okay, to be deleted. Okay, entertain a motion with those two amendments. So moved, Mr. Mayor. Second. Motion and a second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. <clears throat> Next we will go to uh, item five, awards and recognitions. And if we have uh, Feliz Espinosa in the crowd, we have Feliz Espinosa here. If I sound a little hoarse, it's I have a little bit of a cold, so. <clears throat> Feliz, welcome to our meeting. On behalf of the Town of Taos the town, and the Town Council, we would like to recognize Feliz for her accomplishments in placing first in her age group at the NFL Pump, Pass, and Kick local competition held in Taos on Saturday, October 13, 2012. Feliz then competed, competed and placed first in her age group at the sectional competition held in Albuquerque on Sunday, November 4th, 2012. We are very proud of her representing Taos so well. She then earned the honor of representing Taos uh, and all of New Mexico at the 2012 Arizona Cardinals NFL Punt, Pass, and Kick Team Championship held in Glendale, Glendale Arizona on Sunday, November 25th, 2012. Felice placed first in her age group amongst exceptional talent from Arizona and New Mexico. Felice is the first female from Taos New Mexico to place in all three NFL punt, pass, and kick competitions, local, sectional, and team championships. Pe People's Bank is a co-sponsor for this event. They were unable to attend tonight's meeting, but we would also like to uh, acknowledge and honor Feliz Espinosa. They'd like to, they'd like you to go into People's Bank South so they can set up a 529 college savings plan and People's Bank will contribute the first $100. Congratulations to Feliz. And I'd like to read to you this, this uh, proclamation, uh, this uh, a plaque. It reads as, as follows. The mayor of the town of Taos and the town of Taos Council present this award to Feliz Espinosa for her outstanding performance at the NFL Pump Pass and Kick competition, for placing first in the, in the local competition in Taos, New Mexico, with a total score of 240, 240 feet, one inch, for placing first in the sectional competition in Albuquerque with a total score of 264 feet, 11 inches, for placing first in the, in the team championship in Glendale, Arizona, with a total score of 251 feet, three inches. Presented this 26th day of February, 2013. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> On behalf of the mayor and council, thank you for representing Taos so well in your age group. Thank you.
congratulations to the parents as well. Congratulations. <laughs> This time, is there anyone here from uh, the Nonviolence Works? From non Nonviolence Works? Here. At this time, <coughs> Office of the Mayor would like to present to you the proclamation, Gateway to the Enchanted Circle, Proclamation, Office of the Mayor, whereas youth in, a, in the Taos Municipal School District who need extra social, emotional, and academic support can effectively receive this support through the provisions of youth mentoring and whereas youth mentoring is conducted by, care, by a caring adult volunteer who has successfully completed a background check, background check training and who commits their time each week and whereas Nonviolence non Works has been running a youth mentoring program at all schools within the Taos Municipal School District since 2004, whereas this youth mentoring program has been statistically proven to increase school attendance, communication skills, decision making skills, anger management skills, improve academic and boost self-esteem. Now therefore, I, Darren Court of the Mayor of Taos, do hereby encourage all citizens, businesses within the town of Taos, as they are able to participate in nonviolence work youth mentoring program for the benefit of our community. Presented this day, the 26th day of February 2013. Congratulations Thank and thanks for everything you do. Yes, I, I would just like to uh, thank the council and the manager and Mr. Mayor and uh, the town of Taos and employees and some of the department heads that supported this. This is huge for our program. Um, currently we have 200 and 297 kids. We got two, two new girls yesterday and we're almost at the 300 mark. 16 different schools, Penasco, Cuesta, uh, charter schools, TISA. We've had kids at Waldorf, all the schools. Primarily the largest school of course is the middle school which we have about 70 kids almost. Um, a huge program. Uh, we have 22 boys right now without mentors. So this proclamation is going to aid in filling that gap. There's uh, 22 boys out there that don't have mentors, and uh, we're hoping to match them. On the girls' side, we've been doing well lately. We've got a lot of new women mentors, and we have three uh, girls without men mentors. So uh, this is going to be huge. The support of the town, this is excellent. Uh, we're all very, very elated that this is happening. And we're going to actually, when we go out to businesses and promote nonviolence works and what our mission uh, is, our mission statement is to inspire, train, and empower all people to lead lives of nonviolence. Very simple concept. Our mentorship program is hang one hour a week, an adult hanging out with a kid and being their friend. Not a set agenda or treatment plan, just being their friend and working with them. We do a longitudinal study, and statistically, our kids that have been in the program have, have improved uh, on academics, anger management, uh, like the mayor was uh, discussing. Uh, without any further words, I just would like to say thank you so much uh, to the town of Taos. This is huge, and we're gonna, we're gonna uh, spring from this and, and continue to grow in a positive direction. Thank you. Mr. Grow up. <laughs> Mr. Gravel, I, I just want to extend our sincere thanks uh, for everything that you have done and all the volunteers involved with Nonviolence Works. That, that's individuals such as yourself that make up the very fabric that volunteer, that assist our youth that we really need. So thank you again. Thank Appreciate, you. It. Appreciate thank it. it. Thank you. This time uh, we'll go to on with the agenda. Thank you again, Mr. Gravel. <coughs> and we do have item six, the Citizens Forum. Individuals signed up for the Citizens Forum 
wishing to speak that I've checked the, uh, the uh, sign-up sheet here is Mr. Jeff Northrup. Welcome to our meeting, sir. Thank you. I have a very, <clears throat> I have a very brief statement. I spent a good part of my life over the last 18 months watching this Sari Command Center saga unfold. It has become a litmus test separating the honest from the corrupt. All five of you are corrupt and do not deserve to be in a position of public trust. I ask each of you to do the right thing and resign immediately. Any questions? Next, we have Mr. James Gurkin. Welcome to our meeting, sir. Good evening, Mayor and Councilman. I uh, um, wrote a petition, and I'd read it to you and, and let you know that we had uh, 75 signatures. We, the undersigned residents of Taos, support the resurfacing and refurbishing of the tennis courts in Kit Carson Park. Kit, Pars Kit Carson Park lies within the Arts and Cultural District, which accommodates both citizens and visitors alike. Tennis is a healthy and affordable sport for children and adults, and we believe it would be good for the entire community. <coughs> and I'm um, raising two daughters, and I grew up playing tennis, and, and so did many of my friends, and I thought it'd be good to give people a reason to come to town and play tennis and stop and have lunch and, and get the park active again. And so, and everyone I asked to sign the petition said yes. Do so you have a copy of that yeah. petition you want to turn in? Madam Clerk, if you can go ahead and accept that. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you for being here. <clears throat> Next, we have uh, Victoria Flores. Welcome to our meeting. I'd also like to welcome CEO of Kit Carson Electric, Mr. Luis Reyes. Welcome to our meeting, sir. Hi there. Hi, welcome. Hi. Welcome to our meeting. Good evening, um, Mr. Mayor. Um, Mr. Manager and uh, Council, um, we have um, Ms. Victoria Flores um, and myself, Ariana Del Marico, uh, here on behalf of Rocky Mountain Youth Corps. Um, we just briefly want to speak to you a little bit about what we're doing. Um, we're currently on um, a real big push um, on recruitment. We just kind of want to get the word out um, to all youth about what we're doing and, and so that all youth um, between the ages of 18 and 25 have an opportunity to actually apply to, uh, to serve with us. And I'm just gonna read a little bit um, about what we're doing. Nationally, there are 6.7 million young people between the ages of 16 and 24 who are neither enrolled in school nor employed. These are youth Rocky Mountain Youth Corps serves and we are recruiting for new crews. Our programs engage young adults in national and community service that enhance individuals' abilities to be viable members of their communities. RMYC provides job training, certifications, and structures the development of interpersonal skills that lead to greater employability after the core or success in further education. It is our mission to be a stepping stone to new opportunities. We are currently hiring three conservation crews that will begin their orientation on March 26th. We are looking for young men and women between the ages of 18 and 25 who are willing to challenge themselves and work hard to improve their communities. Interested applicants must be willing to leave town for eight days at a time, live and work in the outdoors for five to nine months. So these are our terms. Um, we have 900 hour terms up to 1,700 hours. Rocky Mountain Youth Corps is a positive, healthy environment where young adults have the opportunity to learn and grow. As part of RMYC's AmeriCorps program, Corps members are paid for their time, a living stipend, as well as an AmeriCorps education award upon completion of their term of service from $2,500 up to $5,500 depending on their term of service. So this is an incredible incentive that we are proud to offer. 
They will also receive several certifications ranging from chainsaw operation and maintenance to incident command system introductions. That is all. We'd like to um, ask you, we'd like to challenge you, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Manager and Council, to pass out at least five applications to young people in this age range along with the position descriptions. We certainly appreciate it. And we're happy I, to do that. I'm and Ms. Victoria is gonna do that now. I'll pass these out. And um, just to support what Ariana is saying is that a lot of our youth really can benefit from what AmeriCorps is designed to do in the communities. Um, the way that we interact with the community gives the youth um, an appreciation for how complex it is and all the different dynamics of a community. And in doing that, they are really inspired to continue that process, as well as the incentive for certifications and education and, and realizing what it means to further that. Um, but in order to get the youth in the door, <laughs> we need to work together in order to, for the word of mouth, to really um, let the Taos community know that we have this wonderful program for our community and for the youth, and we have to take advantage of it so that they can expand um, and, and kind of see what's out there and value community. Right. Um, so Council I'll Member Pedalta, uh, question? Mr. Mayor, if I could, just a, a real <coughs> quick uh, clarification. You said you're gonna be uh, uh, hiring three crews now in March. How many uh, individuals to a crew? Seven, so that's a total of 21 youth. Mm -hmm. and, and in your program, how many can you uh, place in positions besides the conservation crews that are coming up? What other projects do you have? Well, in addition to our conservation program, we are currently operating our energy efficiency program mm -hmm. where we are weatherizing homes. They just began their term of service in mid-January, and they will graduate in August. And there are a total of eight of them. They just got back from Santa Fe Community College where they completed two weeks of training um, to be able to uh, be certified in energy efficiency and weatherization. And then during the summer, we have the YCC um, programs, which we don't have any for Taos this summer, but we do have for Penasco, um, Mora. Um, Raton, El Rito, including Abiquiu. So. It, it does give uh, youth the opportunity to also expand in the northern New Mexico region um, beyond um, what you know what they might see. So we do hire seasonally. So these are yearly. Um, we have a crew 917 hours. They graduate. Then we do have another crew that's hired on the next year. So this is something to keep in mind seasonally of all youth that you feel would be a good applicant. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, I'd, I'd personally like to uh, offer my help uh, to run some PSAs on the registration as well to get the word out. So Wonderful. Yeah, Thank you so you. much. This is such an important cause. So. Real Thank quickly, you. I just want to introduce Victoria. Um, she is our learning lab supervisor, so she's working with the middle school age kids who have been um, expelled or suspended from the, the public school system. And she has just been promoted to our recruiting and transition coordinator. So this means that we're going to be putting forth that commitment at Rocky Mountain Youth Corps to this position. So that it starts from the very beginning, that relationship at recruitment, through their process as they're um, serving their term, and then also into their transition and um, as alumni, so that their service to our country continues even after their term of service. Great. And that, that is um, captured through this relationship. Great. So I'll be, I'll be here more. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations on your position. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you, you for your time. Sure. Next, uh, we have that wants to speak. I'm not sure if there's anything. It, there's not uh, checks next to these names. So, um, is there anyone else that would like to speak under the citizens forum at this time? <clears throat> I'd like to also welcome board member from Kit Carson Electric, Lisa Milet. Come to our meeting. I didn't see you earlier. <laughs> welcome to our meeting. Welcome to our meeting, sir. <clears throat> um, item G of today's agenda refers to um, dispensing with a, potentially dispensing with the joint powers agreement with respect to the dispatch center as of December 31st. This is the present contract that was signed in 1998 that renewed 
automatically in 2008. And Section 6 says, no party shall terminate its participation in the agreement without first giving all other parties one year written notice. So I don't think that you can terminate the agreement as of December 31st. It would be hard to do so prior to March 1st of this year, I believe. <coughs> With respect to the uh, meetings that are filmed, the council meetings and the planning and zoning commission meetings, I wonder if somebody could tell me who's responsible for oversight of Media Taos, which is the, the group, the organization um, that's responsible for maintaining a site that has these, these meetings. As of right now, the most current meeting that's on that site is January 8th. Within the last couple of weeks, the meeting on January 22nd, 24th, and the Planning and Zoning Commission meeting, which were up, um, have now come down for some reason. So I wonder if somebody might look into that and find out why these, um, why these meetings aren't available. It seems to me that, that that's your most important task as you sit up there and, and consider the public health, safety, and welfare of this community. Um, the public health, safety, and welfare of this community is grounded in access to this kind of information on a daily basis. All of you, I believe, have sat up there or spoken elsewhere about, um, about how the internet is going to be our salvation. Well, if it's going to be our salvation, then make it so, gentlemen. Thanks. Is there anyone else that would like to speak under the Citizens Forum at this time? Seeing none, I will close the Citizens Forum and also welcome Chairman Baroni from the County Commission. Welcome to our meeting, sir. And we will go to the consent agenda. <clears throat> At this time, I'll, I will read the items on the consent agenda. If uh, you would wish the council members wish to uh, discuss any item, we could pull those from the consent, ag uh, consent agenda and vote on the remaining items. Item 7A, lease agreement with Xerox Corporation, consideration and possible approval of a 48-month 48 48-month 48 master lease agreement with Xerox Corp Corporation for copies, printers, scanners, for the following departments, executive, clerk, finance, planning, utility, billing, communications, police, judicial, landfill, public library, visitor center, and the youth and family center. Item B, apparatus acqu acquisition. Consideration of possible approval to enter in contract with Chestang Ford in the amount of 125,000 for the purchase of a, of a 2013 Ford F550 Skeeter brush truck to replace engine 10, a 1993 Dodge 350. Amendment C, um, uh, item C, amendment two to contract TT 12172 with D Daniel B. Stevens and Associates. Consideration and possible approval of amendment two to contract TT 12172 with Daniel B. Stevens and Associates, increasing the contract amount by $5,070.63 inclusive, exclusive of gross receipts tax for work performed related to the abate to settlement, including hydrolo hydrologic analysis. Item D, consideration and approval of contract TT 13181, Daniel, Steven, Daniel B. Stevens and Associates, incorporated in the amount of $56,319.45, inclusive of gross receipts tax for, a hydro for hydrological services to provide viable water supply for current and future residents. Members of the council? Item B, any uh, further items, council members? If not, entertain a motion to approve. So move. Second. Motion and second, any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion <coughs> carries. Council member Peralta, item D. Sorry. In looking at the contract, Mr. Mayor, I, I noticed that the uh, job description is is also uh, related to uh, item C on the consent agenda, and I'm wondering why that's not rolled in together into the same contract. They're both talking about, in, in this case, water rights, uh, uh, the uh, beta case water rights uh, uh, work that has to be done, and so why are we doing two different contracts? We're doing the first one because of the council recall there was some a bilateral agreement that needed to be negotiated late in the abeta process. That was under that contract and that's what this first one is about. The second one is about work going forward 
after a bit with the beta settlement we have a lot of things to do and so essentially they overran cost on the first one so the first one is to catch up and zero that one out and the next one is for here going forward okay okay thank you mr mayor any other questions comments if not entertain a motion to approve so moved second motion and a second any further discussion all those in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. those opposed motion carries Next, we'll go to item 8A, presentation by our district attorney, Mr. Donald Gallegos. Mr. Gallegos, along with Lawrence A. Medina, executive director of Rio Grande ATP Incorporated, and Kim Hamstra, CEO of Tri-County Community Services. These individuals will present a report on the first annual Taos County Substance Abuse, Abuse Summit that took place on October 24th, 2012. Gentlemen, ma'am, welcome. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, uh, council members, uh, Mr. Rodriguez, sanitary. I, I'm going to be brief here. The important stuff is going to be reported by my colleagues here, so I was just going to stand up so I could make a quick exit. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's uh, <laughs> that plan is shot now. <laughs> that's all right. I may have to leave and, and work on some legislative matters uh, where I've been. Uh, some time ago, uh, the, the matter of substance abuse has always been a problem, has always been an issue in this community, as you all know. And uh, Mr. Medina and Ms. Hamstra did something that I believe needs to be uh, pointed out and also needs to be commended in that they uh, got their two agencies together and along with other agencies, they approached me and I, I thought the idea was an excellent one. And uh, we decided to, to hold a, a community summit which uh, was to be comprehensive in nature as much as we could, dealing with almost all the aspects involved, everything from the criminal justice system to uh, the mental health system and obviously the uh, substance abuse issues themselves. We uh, participants were many from throughout the county. We had a tribal participation. Uh, we had from the schools. I wanna point out and recognize that uh, Councilman Gonzalez, I believe also attended and uh, Chief Coke. And so we did have uh, quite a, a, an interesting time. They'll get into a little bit more detail on it. But, th but the bottom line, uh, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, is that substance abuse uh, obviously has to be looked at as a whole. Uh, you know, the old saying about you can't arrest your way out of the problem is certainly true. I will say by the same token that there aren't people in jail or prison there because they just smoked a joint. That's a fallacy and that just doesn't happen. Uh, but we do have issues dealing with dual diagnosis, such as mental health plus addiction to substances. We do have uh, substance abuse that then either exacerbates or contributes or does something uh, towards domestic violence, DWI, trafficking and drugs, use of drugs, uh, and what's become probably the most troubling and most complained about recently has been burglaries, larcenies, forgeries, embezzlements, frauds those kind of things. So with that in mind, uh, you know, the, the agencies came together, they presented a, a uh, actually took, I'll let them talk a little bit more about it, but I was just happy to be part of the process. And what we'd be asking you today is obviously all of you I know personally are concerned about the issue and we would be looking for ways that you can support us publicly or otherwise. We did approach the county. They were very gracious and they have also supported us publicly, I believe, with a resolution. Um, the goal we're hoping to is to start, even in this face of uh, Tea Party politics and shrinking budgets on the federal level, we still believe that there's a way to hopefully maybe target resources from the federal, the state, and even the local level uh, with the particular goal of making Taos a recovery friendly community county, if you will. It doesn't mean you take the criminal justice aspect out. It doesn't mean you change a whole lot except dealing with the folks who shouldn't be entering the system, prevention, and dealing with those who are in the system. And even with those who have uh, become in, involved in the system, serve their time, but then are going to be members of this community regardless. So with that, uh, I will defer to my distinguished colleagues here. I'm, I'm gonna remain. If there are any questions for me, I, I'd be happy to take those at the proper time. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gallegos. Thank you, Councilman and our 
city uh, manager or town manager. Uh, first of all, just really wanna thank our district attorney for his support in this efforts and his staff uh, that sat on our committee. So again, thank you. Um, again, I'm Lawrence Medina. I'm the executive director of Rio Grande uh, ATP. We uh, treatment program, we've been established out of Embudo for many years, for 33 years. And uh, we were known for our inpatient, but currently we're providing outpatient services here in Taos. Um, we're fortunate to live in Taos County, a beautiful place and a wonderful community. Still, like, uh, like all communities, we have our challenges, substance abuse and mental health. We are here, to sh here today to share with you how residents of Taos County came together to address the problem we are faced with. Taos County is ranked amongst the top 10 counties out of 33 with deaths related to alcohol and drug overdoses. A recent study re uh, released by the Department of Transportation showed Taos County having a 43% 43 43 recidivism rate in DWI arrests compared to the state average of 41%. The idea of a substance abuse summit came to light as a result of a national movement uh, that is themed promoting a recovery friendly community. We base this that there's a lot of community members and families that are hurting due to substance abuse and mental health. Some of the goals are the main overarching goals for the summit was to heighten awareness of the problem of substance abuse and mental health. The second one that we felt that was important was empowerment of community members, uh, families, and individuals to seek solutions that we believe that the solution falls within the community. As a result of the summit, we put together uh, an ad, uh, a committee to help put this together and we were blessed again to have the district attorney and his staff participate, Tri-County Community Services, of course Rio Grande, Taos Alive Coalition, Taos County DWI. We are fortunate also to get participation from the Taos uh, Pueblo Behavioral Health, uh, CYFD, Public Defender's Office, Holy Cross Hospital, Vista Grande High School, and representation from the faith-based community. On October 24th of last year, we were surprised the day of the event by hosting over 300 participants and having over 30 agencies set up booths to showcase their services. It was held at the Kachina Lodge and thank goodness we had the space, but it, we were expecting, we were happy if we got 100. So it was, it was really, really great to see the, the, the great attendance. Our keynote speaker is well-known resident Ed Cardenas, a social worker who kicked off our event. His discussions focused on eight areas, as our district attorney mentioned, and it broke down into legal, medical, family, treatment, Taos Pueblo, prevention, faith-based, and youth. This included breakout session allowing community members and professionals to provide input, not only on the problem that we are faced with, but solutions. The community voice was heard and it was documented in a report that was presented in your packets, I believe, and I also have some extra ones here if anybody would like a copy. Um, one of the largest findings as a result of the summit is the readiness factor for Taos County, that what Taos County possesses, and it was great, uh, and it was showed by the attendance. Three themes that reoccurred throughout the day and that are continuing regard relating to substance abuse that's hurting our community and mental health. And these three uh, themes are the need for solutions, the need for continued cooperation, and the need for a greater community awareness by allowing access to services to allow community members to get help. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Kim Hamstra with Tri-County Community Service and talk about the outcomes. Hello, <coughs> pleasure being here. Thank you. Um, so we really want to focus on some things that we can do. And a lot has happened really since the summit, like I said, we we're, were hoping for 100, we got 300 people, is looking at areas that really can support recovery friendly means more involvement. Um, so we have been focusing on two really huge issues and that is crisis care, access to care, and then also having more treatment opportunities in Taos. Um, so one of the things we've all been working hard, work, we're working with the police, 
Holy Cross, other providers, community members, UNM students. We are looking and asking for support to start a 24-7 mobile crisis unit for mental health and substance abuse. One of the issues that many community members are talking about is access was difficult um, and crises would happen or they would need treatment after five o'clock on Fridays. Um, you can't decide when a family member is gonna become depressed and needs help. Um, so we have been working on this um, and getting more and more support to make a therapist, um, trained community members available to support police, the police to call us, community members to call providers and other community members to get people into treatment. And it may just mean going to somebody's house and saying you care. Um, this has been done. We are interviewing other um, towns that are doing this now and picking out the pieces that work best for Taos. Um, it's exciting. We started out, I think four or five people were talking about this, and, and when we asked for letters to give to the county commissioners, within one week I got 180 letters just saying this is, we need this in Taos. So the exciting part is Taos is ready and wanting to step outside the box and make recovery available and not just nine to five and not just going to a doctor's office, but dealing with people that really care. So that is really one of the priorities. The other one, which has been a dream, I think, for all of us doing um, substance abuse treatment is the sad truth is there's, there's outpatient treatment and there is a social detox. It's a seven day program in town. If a person wants more treatment or goes into crisis, they have to leave Taos is they have to get into a police car or be put in an ambulance and taken to Las Vegas. If they want to some longer term substance abuse, they need a few more days to get the help they need to be comfortable. They have to go, the closest is Española, then it's farther out. They have to go to Santa Fe, Albuquerque. We have people that go to Arizona. People wanna stay in their home. Um, so what we are asking also for is support from the council to support us to start looking into what out of just not, not having a name is respite house is a place where our people that live here can go and get support and it, it's not just therapists it's people that care um, so i not to kind of I could go on with this one forever um, but it would allow our community members to help provide some care to, tr to provide treatment um, but the bottom line is our community can all become involved and I think it'll deal with some of the legal issues is we can look at um, some recovery friendly alternatives to jail or some treatment when they leave jail, there's a place they can go to continue to help them. So we just wanna ask for your support to start looking into moving this process on and it's exciting. The t and uh, the nice thing is this town is ready and I think the 300 people that showed up and uh, we have seven committees right now, a total of 25 people working every other week to keep the energy going. Because I don't know if you remember, my promise is we weren't stopping. This was the beginning and we're on this. So I'd just like your support for us to continue. Great. I think uh, you guys have done an excellent job and um, thank you for conducting that summit. I think it was great. Uh, the, what is your prime source, uh, Ms. Hemstra, uh, for funding? We get a mixture of insurance, uh, Medicaid, and then we do get some behavioral health funds from the state um, and a little bit from grants. Okay. So we'd like, we, we would be happy to offer a resolution in support of that funding That'd mechanism. And also when we, uh, we are fortunate to raise money as a grassroots initiative and we raised, uh, I think it was maybe like $12,000 in cash, another 10,000 in in-kind to pay for the summit and it paid for itself. And we're, one of the goals, and it was agreed on, that we are gonna make this an annual event. So we're seeking sp uh, support in spirit as Mr. Gonzalez and, and the Chief of Police and, and Council uh, to participate. And we may be coming to seeing if we could, you know, uh, seek support as well to, to help pay for it. And it's low budget, you know, we, you know, we wanna make this. And, and of course, as Kim has shared, you know, for the bigger initiative or programs that we wanna create here in Taos. Right. 
Any comments, uh, Council Member Gonzalez? Thank you all for showing up. I, I think what the work that you do um, sometimes goes unrecognized, and it's it's becoming more evident in today's times, especially with economic depression, how much of mental stability, mental health, is is truly among us, and and you see it because now even at the federal level that they're enacting more support in the way of grants for, for mental health research. Um, so I think what you guys are doing is excellent. Taos has is, is always been known as a place for healing, and I, th and I think that in itself helps a lot. But we as community leaders also need to be at the forefront of engaging. Um, and again, I, I'm all for, I mean, it's, it's expensive to jail. And, and I think that's how we look at it from a budget standpoint at the same point. Um, especially when there's other alternatives to really help somebody, because um, sometimes it, th that's not what helps. It almost sometimes makes the situation worse. So again, thank you. And anything I can do um, to to continue it, please please let me know. If I could add one thing, um, I know the county commissioners are going to D.C. this coming week to present, and they're taking some of our information to ask for support. And I would just like to ask. I think you all are also looking at a trip. Um, to look at some support is if you would take our ideas um, and see if there's at the federal level face-to-face -face, uh, to get some things going for Taos. Yeah, uh, I would recommend that you meet with our manager to uh, discuss the options and what uh, what we can do as a body. Uh, but I think a good place to start is the resolution in support of. I think that's a good place to start. Okay, any other comments, questions? Thank you all for your great work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. <clears throat> Next, we will go to item B, 8B, presentation by Armstrong Consultants. Armstrong Consultants update on Taos Regional Airport's runway 1230 design and construction project. Gentlemen, welcome. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor, you may want to you state your name for the record, just so that. Yes, people. my name is Michael J. Garcia. I am the uh, an engineer and principal with Armstrong Consultants, your airport engineer. Um, just wanted to. Take your time. And if I may, uh, Mr. Mayor, if I may, uh, just a quick introduction. Uh, <clears throat> I, I, I asked uh, Armstrong to uh, come here and just uh, explain to us or remind us what the project is, uh, how it's going. Um, one thing I, I do want to point out to you is that um, they, th this is uh, proving to be quite an unusual project. Uh, you will all recall that uh, the town has been in, uh, in litigation and in, in, in negotiations to finally uh, allow this project to, to, to continue, and that happened just, uh, this, just this fall. And th this is after 20 years. And so th that's put the town in a, in a very unique position where- um, 28 years. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> 28 years. <laughs> yeah, the, sec the second longest running um, dispute of this type in the country, in the history of uh, FA FAA. Anyway, uh, so it, it, it puts the town in a position where um, uh, we are we are a priority. We're a long, long priority, but there's no uh, desig uh, specially designated funding for for this priority. So, what happens? What has been happening is FAA scrounges around for the resources to keep this project moving forward. And uh, it, sometimes we it, it um, we are in the, in the unusual uh, situation where uh, FAA asks us at the last minute to apply for funding that they you know found someplace, and we apply and. And a number of times they've asked me to actually have a, a special meeting with the council, which so far it hasn't had to be necessary at the end. But uh, because uh, the funding was available, they wanted to approve it, and it was going to come forward. Uh, there have there been a number of times, uh, m uh, many months, in fact, where, where Armstrong was working without a contract, uh, with just the promise by FAA that, 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 they, that they would be caught up and they would be paid after it was all said and done. And that's all because FAA wants to keep the project going, moving forward, et cetera. Which then puts us in a situation, I, I think I've explained this to you a number of times, it does put us in a, situ in a situation where uh, the project will probably not, will probably continue uh, along that road. And uh, where uh, from one day to the next, we may very well be called by FAA to, um, to apply for the construction part of the, of, of, of the project and at that moment show where our cash is. And so it's for that reason that um, anyway, I, I brought this project to you so you know exactly what it is and you can hear directly from the, uh, the, the people who are in charge of designing it um, how, uh, how, how it's going. Anyway, thank you. without further ado. Yes, please. sir. All right, well, thank you for your time tonight. I uh, just want to let you know what was going on with the, at your airport. Um, uh, again, we are, just, yeah, next slide. Um, 
just to let you know, we are your airport engineer, Ron Strong Consultants. We all we do are airports. Um, we work everywhere but the, in, in the western part of the United States, and uh, we're very happy to be with the town of Taos. And um, we are in our second contract with the town of Taos. Uh, we've been on board with the, with the town since 2006. We were reselected in 2010, and uh, we're excited to be, uh, be with you folks during this time. <coughs> um, but enough about us, I want to bring you up to date on your project. Runway uh, 1230, the milestones. Um, we've had quite a few milestones within the past year. Um, the first milestone would be the signing of the memorandum of agreement, the MOA between the town of Taos and the Taos Pueblo. Uh, that was very exciting uh, to get that done in December of 2011. That allowed the EIS to move ahead and allow the FAA to issue a final determination on your EIS. As uh, Mr. Rodriguez said that you did have the second longest EIS in the history of the FAA. There's one longer one still going on, it's back east somewhere. Uh, but it was a milestone. Uh, and that's to be uh, just, it's, it's a huge milestone for the town and the Pueblo to, to get that through. Um, with that final determination being issued from the FAA, um, to show how, how, how monumental that was, the FAA uh, director, Mr. Huerta, came down on uh, October 6, 2012 and, and congratulated uh, the Pueblo and the town on, on getting this resolved and, and allowing the EIS to move forward. Um, I've never seen that before, uh, ever. <laughs> to even see the FAA jet at an airport is, is uh, is monumental and, and you're to be congratulated for, uh, for your hard work and dedication to the airport. Well, I think that that was a, a, just a testament of how important it was to the federal government yes, sir. that we resolve this issue that you would see a U United States Air Force jet yes, sir. Uh, land at our own airport. So that, was, that was great to see. It Mr. is. Mr. Mayor, and one other thing, um, Senator Bingaman uh, relayed to his staff that now he could finally retire <laughs> based on, <laughs> on, on this <laughs> approval. Yes, <laughs> yes, sir, Mr. Gonzalez. <coughs> Um, <laughs> once, uh, after the press conference, that allowed uh, us, Armstrong Consultants, to enter discussions with the FAA, the State Aviation Division, and the Town of Taos, and, and getting a uh, contract, a scope of work developed uh, that would satisfy what the EIS has recommended. So um, that task order, as the FAA calls them task orders, is Task Order Delta D. Um, that task order contained two elements, element one, uh, is to relocate the existing runway for end uh, per the EIS. That allows uh, element two to occur, which is the construction of runway 1230 along with the parallel taxiway, uh, connector taxiways, and holding bays. Uh, also in that element two, there will be uh, an access road. Uh, they call it, I'm not allowed to call it an access road, I apologize. It should be a hall road for the FAA language uh, to be constructed in this uh, task order. So that move forward. Uh, between the town and FAA and the state and us, so we're moving ahead. Um, runway 1230, the work performed. Uh, to date, we have uh, the survey, all the survey can, uh, completed that's required for designing this project. Um, along with that, the geotechnical field work was completed uh, in February, and out, well, close to the end of January, we'll call it early February. Um, we have uh, Obtain, we have all that information now in-house. Uh, our designers are hard at work right now, as a matter of fact. We have uh, been working really closely with the FAA, uh, the State Aviation, and the Town of Taos uh, to make sure our preliminary drawings are within the EIS as well as the new FAA design guidelines. They just issued some new guidelines last year, which makes it a little challenging. Um, so we are working closely with them. We've gone through six preliminary designs, to be quite honest with you, on the layouts. And today, uh, while we were here in Taos, uh, actually with Mr. Thompson, the airport manager, got a call from the FAA saying <coughs> they, they really liked the, our number six. So I think we're heading in the right direction. I think uh, now we got a good grasp on what we need to do. Uh, we'll start uh, doing the uh, 3D modeling and, and making it look like it's supposed to. The upcoming milestones, um, one thing you will see, and as Mr. Rodriguez told you earlier, one of the things that happened was uh, towards the end of the federal fiscal year in September, 
Uh, the FAA basically scrounged up money from the entire FAA budget and said, here's, because you have not risen, you are the FAA's priority, believe it or not. I mean, you, there's a lot of big airports out there. You got LaGuardia, you got Chicago O'Hare and DIA, you got Fort Worth. Um, but you're up there with them, challenging for money, which is unheard of. Um, this is a milestone uh, and that needs to be understood, I think, by, by the town and, and the council and, and mayor, um, that you are now at the forefront. So when, at the end of that federal fiscal year, they got as much money as they could and they said, let's just let's get this thing started to, you know, under contract to get designed and things like that. So um, that is where we're at and that's how we got to this point. Um, what that allowed us to do is kind of get us to where we are right now. You will be seeing um, the completion of the design because we took the design as far as we could with the money that was available. So um, you will see another contract from us to get the final design completed this year. And that's our goal no matter what. So uh, we will get that. We will be working with the town of Taos, AFA, and the state aviation on that. Um, the construction phase is what we're shooting at is looking towards the uh, 2014 fiscal year, the federal. Um, we get it designed this year. We'll be ready to go, uh, hopefully, uh, early in uh, uh, 14. Um, and that would be breaking <coughs> ground and, and then have big ground breaking ceremonies and, and uh, getting this thing rolling and, and seeing it to fruition and, and what, we, what you all have worked for uh, so hard and for so long. Uh, I think it's uh, exciting and um, that's where we're at. When, when, Mr. Garcia, when will we see the, uh, you mentioned that you were making six designs or you have had, uh, we've yes, just seen conceptual designs so far. Yes, sir. When will we see the final design? I can get them to you tomorrow. Um, I'd, like to, not I'd, I'd like to see it, not, not tomorrow, but you know. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, um, just for distribution. We'd obviously, start seeing the for mayor, for, you know, there's things, once we, now that we have kind of a good uh, handle on it, you don't want to start just, you know, sending things out that haven't been approved, so. Sure. Uh, but now that we, actually have FAA concurrence on this final uh, final one at some to date, um, we can definitely get that to you. Yeah, once you, once you know that, uh, that you're confident that it's the final one, I'd like to see it. Yes, sir, yeah. absolutely. Okay. Council Member Gonzalez? Um, again, just the, the overall design and, and the amount of time that's been spent on this, yes, it's it's very, very refreshing to see that the prog progression is, is really real and it's happening. Yes, sir, um, absolutely. It's almost like one of those dreams you wanna pinch yourself from to wake up from, because it has been so long. And, you know, I like the fact, you know, the design plane is a Canada Air CL600, which is a pretty decent sized plane. Yes, sir. I, I do know that when the FAA was trying to land here, um, they did experience the crosswinds effect. And so they almost had to choose an alternative airport to land and then drive up to Taos. Mm -hmm. So I think it stressed, it kind of hammered home the importance of, of what we were trying to achieve and what we're trying to do. So um, again, Mayor, thank you for the negotiations with the Pueblo also to, to get it rolling. Sir. Any other comments? Council Member Pedroza. Mr. Mayor, I just have a question for you. Uh, runway four, Sir. You, say, you say relocate threshold to the north. Could you explain that to the public, what that means? Uh, yes, sir, basically all we're gonna be doing is shortening the existing runway and that has to occur because there are what they call runway protection zones, uh, acronym, FA is famous for acronyms, is the RPZ off of the end of a runway. It's a safety zone. Uh, and if we didn't relocate that, that RPZ would not be enti entirely on your property. It would fall over uh, to the west on other, uh, other property. So with that relocation, it puts it all onto uh, the town's property and there's no problems. Does that shorten the actual runway or not? Yes, sir, it will. By how much? Uh, 420 feet. So that runway now then will be about uh, 5,200 feet instead of 56. Sir. Does that affect the ability of planes to land on that um, smaller size? GA, um, the smaller GA aircraft, uh, we have P210s uh, that we fly in um, and it will not affect those. Um, obviously, the larger jets taking fuel on uh, with your uh, temperatures and your altitude, density altitude, um, yes, it will. Um, but with the long, that's the longer runway, 8,200 feet, will accommodate any jet uh, fuel 
full of fuel and with the winds that she needed any problem with those jets. Okay, Mr. Mayor, thank you. Thank you very much yes, for your yes, sir. Uh, information. Absolutely. Any other questions, comments? Council Member Baker. Thank you, Mayor Cordova, Mr. Garcia. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, with this briefing, it helps the general public to understand the criticality that construction for this airport could begin as early as October 1st of 2013. That's a $24 million project. The town's match is 5%, $1.2 million. So by October 1st of this year, we the town have to demonstrate that we have secured funding to break ground for a ready designed project. If not, we compromise a $24 million project. So that's why it's so important for the community that didn't know why is the town moving so rapidly. We've been working for 28 years at this and it's all coming together now and there's no way that we're gonna compromise the crosswind runway. Yes, sir. Any other comments, questions? Council member uh, I just have a question. Uh, <coughs> with regards to the geotactical uh, analysis, has that been done by the state of New Mexico State Highway Department? Uh, no, sir, the state does not do that for okay. uh, private. So is it, uh, is it a private firm? Yes, sir. It's our Subcontrol Geotest. Okay. So they're local. They're Santa local. Fe and Albuquerque. You got it. Thank you. Yes, sir. Okay. Any other comments, questions? Thank you, gentlemen. I just want to make a comment. Uh, uh, thank the Pueblo also for working with the town of Taos. Uh, you know, this is one of the things that when I came into office as mayor is I wanted to see this thing come to fruition. And uh, it couldn't have happened without the diligence and the commitment to see to keep pushing this thing moving forward and the, and the commitment of the Pueblo to work together. So uh, we really thank the, our leaders at the Pueblo as well for working with the town of Taos. This is a major milestone that we've been able to bring 28 years of negotiations and now we're seeing the, the, end, the ending stages of it. So. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate, Appreciate your time. Thank you. Okay. Next we'll go to item B. Financial update, presentation of the fin monthly financial report for the period ending January 31st, 2013, and review of gross receipts tax and year end projections and distribution calculations process. Marietta. Welcome. Good evening, uh, Mayor, Council Members, Town Manager. Uh, you have in front of you your report, the, the financial report for January. Our revenues continue to come in as for actually for the month of January, we had a slight increase of 2%, but that doesn't change our projections through the end of the year. Um, I just sent out February's GRT this evening, so you'll see that uh, tomorrow when you wake up, I guess. Uh, we did receive from the county our, oh, technology. Um, you did, we did receive from the county our uh, property tax and the amount of 358,000 for the month of January. Um, other than that, revenues are running on okay through the, through the month. Our expenditures, uh, same thing. <coughs> we did do our mid-year budget adjustments. It's not reflected in this report because that was uh, done and presented and approved in February. So when you see February's report, you're gonna see some major adjustments to the expenditures line items on those uh, certain departments that we did do decreases on. Um, capital projects, we did uh, finish off a couple of two big projects with actually money completion of 100% Del Norte project and um, we also did Dillon sewer lane project. We completed that and we're in the works of the library carpet. Well, at the report time it's already done but it was through the bid and award phase on the carpet in the library but through February it's already done. So uh, just a little bit of that. The airport design continues to go forward. You'll receive the reflect on uh, the money amount here is not spent by much. It's in the fund 52, but we did process a big payment of a couple hundred thousand to these guys that just presented their hard work to you. So you'll see that in next month's report. Also uh, continue work on the FTA grant for the bus shelters. And um, other than that on the construction, it's a slow time obviously with the year, at the time of the year, hopefully we'll pick some of these up and get those designs done going through construction now in the spring. And debt service, nothing, most of our debt service will be, debt service payments will be due in May. So you'll have uh, pretty much no activity. Behind the scenes, we're doing all the work, but not the actual payments. <coughs> so you can see um, just the figures, the year to date of collections uh, through the month of January, $6 million in revenue and expenditures at $5.4 million leaving us with an ending balance right now of about $1.8 million. Um, 
just the couple of charts, the graphs, and then just on the special revenue funds and the enterprise funds with uh, anything there. So I stand for any questions right there on the report. And then we'll just go on a little detail of the couple of charts that we have for our projections, how we calculated them. Thank you, Marietta. I um, just want to compliment the manager, and Marietta, and uh, all, all those involved in working on it. I, I really like the presentation, the way it's looking. Uh, I know that the council wanted to see if we changed the way uh, the presentation of our reports, uh, and we wanted to see a monthly report, just how the criticality of how uh, the economy is going and just monitoring our budgets. And I really like what I see. I, I like the graphs. I, everything just makes makes a lot of sense. And uh, just want the constituents to know that because of this, we're we're operating solid in the black. You know, we're we're uh, we're run, running solid <coughs> budgets. We're having to cut, uh, make critical cuts, but make sure ensuring that uh, we don't cut services to our constituents. So, so I thank you guys for really keeping an eye on the, on this budget. Councilmember Peralta. One of the things that reminded me in, in your presentation is something that I've been looking at for the last few days at the county courthouse, and that is that we don't have a bus shelter there. Could we put a bus shelter there, Mr. Uh, Manager? <laughs> Find a location. There's actually a, a combined bus shelter that's there with the TRD, and it's as you're going up the stairs to the courthouse on the right side of the window, so that... Uh, so does, does the bus go into the yes, parking lot and then come back out again? I thought they just stayed on the street, so. Okay, so then we're taken care of. Thank you. Great. Any other comments, questions on the presentation? <coughs> I mean, thank you, Marietta. Do you want to? No, I have this? just a couple more slides you have here. I actually printed me one so I could see this. You know, we've been saying we've already projected our gross receipts through the end of the fiscal year. And um, even though we're sending you a detailed on the gross receipts that are collected, what we did is you'll see this pie chart that shows the gross receipts tax breakdown by a month based on a five-year average. So what we took is I took a five-year average of the gross receipts tax that have been collected for the last five years and percentage it out by what month we received that. So if you see, you know, the bigger months that we receive are September and in February. 10% of the total gross receipts distribution. So that's how we based on how we've projected going forward. You know, we already know that in July we receive 8%, 9% in August, 10 in September. And so that's how we projected for the whole year out to say that that's what we expect to come, you know, with this year going forward. So that's sort of how we did our projections. Mr. Mayor, if I may add to, uh, it was, um, that trend was surprisingly steady in fact, there was not even 2% variation from one month to the other month every year. So every year, February was about 10%, even over the last over the last five years. And uh, for example, July and August, et cetera, they were each about 8%, 9%. So uh, uh, never in one year did, did, did the percentage change, even, even 2%. So this is a, a pattern we can expect, and that allows us, therefore, to uh, project to the end of the year. So you know, if, if at the beginning of the year we know uh, we, we should be about 20 percent, uh, and um, therefore it's just a matter of uh, dividing the rest into the uh, 80 percent. 80 percent, we can give you a pretty good projection. We feel pretty good about it. So currently through February already, we've collected 70 percent of what we're going to collect. So the last three months are pretty much down, you know, not a very much percentage. So it's a good way of projecting with the help of Oscar's expertise on it. I noticed that the, uh, our ending balance is still projected to exceed the state's minimum requirement of 112 yes. uh, by 133,000. Yes, and whatever we do have after we discuss this at the last meeting, you know, if we have any extra reserve at the end of the year, we're going to put it towards to build up that 112th reserve, as a council member Peralta stated in the last meeting. That's our plan to go forward. Because, you know, these are all projections, and yes, we're not going to get to the penny, so, you know, whatever delta it is, that's what we plan to do. And, and just so you know, so 112th is about 30 days of operations. So what we have right now is about 35 days. Yes, it's more than the, than the 30 days, but we need, we, there's, there's a lot further to go. Uh, and the town used to be much, much more in the black. Yes. But we're, we're getting there. Great. Okay. Thank you, Mary. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we'll go to item uh, <coughs> E, resolution 1306, public record inspection and fees, consideration of possible approval 
of resolu resolution 1306 <coughs> superseding resolution 1006, which makes public records available for inspection and copying while establishing reasonable copy fees for public records to comply with state law and town ordinance. This resolution includes increasing copying fees and adding fees for oversized documents such as maps and plans. Uh, yes, sir. Mr. Mayor, uh, this is an attempt by, uh, by us to try and just update uh, what we charge for that service right now. Uh, updated in two ways. Uh, first of all, it just recognizes that a lot of the information that we're being asked for and that we're providing is now going out electronically. And, and that seems to be a, a, a pretty, uh, pretty aggressive trend. We expect that that is going to continue at least for some, for some time anyway. Uh, and so, um, so, so the, the, the good news here is that a lot of the requests are just handled by uh, email or some sort of electronic copy. In fact, there's now um, a growing trend, which we're very happy about, that people come in when they ask for big documents, that they bring in their own PDF machines, which is, we just think that's fantastic. Now, uh, but there is still this one, this, uh, yeah, 12% of the, of, of the requests that we get are still hard copies. And, um, um, and, and, and many of them are for, um, well, you know, the, um, uh, quite a few copies. Anyway, so what, we, what we've, we're proposing for you here is a, a situation or a, um, uh, a fee schedule whereby the first three copies are free. We don't charge for the first three copies. And there's a lot of people in that 12% that, that, um, that come under that. And everybody else from that point on it would be a dollar a page, which is uh, you know, a market for, uh, for the state. Uh, and so uh, we think by that means uh, we would be able to cover the town's uh, cost for uh, a lot of those copies. Uh, and at the same time, as much as possible, and continuing to, to um, uh, digitize a lot of our records so that we can, we can send them on to people uh, electronically or even post them online. We're trying to do that as much as possible as well so that people can help themselves whenever they want to uh, a lot of those public documents. Okay. Any other comments, questions? <coughs> um, <coughs> I just want to let the, for the public know, and I mentioned this during my State of the Town address, is uh, we receive a lot of public records requests uh, in comparison to the city of um, Roswell, Ridoso, Farmington, the town of Taos receives more than those cities combined. That just shows you the magnitude of, uh, and, and I'm just, you know, uh, I have the, the statistics there, but um, for a city like Las Cruces, we, we, we ha receive more than the city of Las Cruces. And they have 70,000 plus residents and we have 5,000. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's and pretty. And Rio Rancho. And Rio Rancho. <laughs> And real rental, so it just shows the magnitude of how busy our our public our uh, count, uh, town clerk is. Any other comments, questions? What is the new rate uh, again, Oscar? A, a dollar a page after the first three pages. The first okay. three pages are free. Okay. And Mr. Mayor and Council Members, I, if I can also add that other municipalities do charge for email records, and the town of Taos does not charge for that. But they are free if they, they choose if to email, emails, have them yes, emailed. If they're emails, yes, there's no charge for that. Okay. Yeah. And, and again, our goal is to have it as many documents as we possibly can online so people can help themselves directly to those, to those documents. And so over time, um, yeah, hopefully this, this will, be, uh, will go the way of uh, paper checks. Okay. Council Member Abate. Thank you, Mayor Cordova. Uh, just for an example, if you were to retrieve a five-page document under these terms with the town, it would the first three pages would be free. The next two would be a dollar each for a total of two dollars. If you go to the county, since our commissioners are here, uh, very fair and competitive. Five pages at the county is going to run you fifty cents a page or two and a half dollars. So you can see that we're very fair and consistent with the county and other municipalities. Okay. Any questions, comments? Uh, what is the pleasure of the council? Move for approval, Mr. Mayor. Second. Motion to approve. And a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the motion carries. Next, we'll go to <coughs> item F, grant agreement with the Department of Finance and Administration, local government division. Consideration and possible approval of amendment number two to grant agreement number TE07 with the Department of Finance, local government division in the amount of 362000 Nineteen dollars for enhanced 911 services and equipment. Um, members of the council on items F and G, <coughs> the members of the commission are here. So members of the commission, members of the the county manager and assistant manager are here. 
I uh, just want to let them know, let, let the council know that I've had some very positive dialogue with the council, and with the commission, and the proposal has been submitted. Those of you have, uh, each one of you have received a proposal, <laughs> and uh, I look forward to continuing the dialogue with the commission and the county. Uh, this is an attempt to uh, s merely secure the, finan the, the financing of the PSAP. Uh, we met with DFA, and uh, they're starting to schedule uh, all of the uh, uh, the process is involved in, in, in granting the, the dollars. So, Oscar, I just wanted to make those comments there, and then uh, I think the commission may want to discuss something under this item or the next item, and I'll, I'll open up. This isn't pu a public hearing, but uh, uh, I absolutely welcome some, some comments from the commission. Okay. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Mayor, the only thing I would like to add to that is that uh, DFA is anxious for us to uh, execute the agreement. You'll recall that when this item came to the council uh, last month, uh, it was uh, approved contingent upon um, the, uh, us reaching a, a new um, uh, F, a JPA with uh, joint powers agreement with um, the stakeholders, including the county. Um, we've gone a ways uh, with that, and, and in the meantime, uh, and, and we continue to uh, work with them on that, uh, but in the meantime, uh, DFA says, well, look, at some point, someone's got to tell us uh, that, you will, you will, that, that you will accept uh, the grant so that we can then tell Motorola to begin making it and so that it then begins to arrive to you. Now, one thing they, they did make clear, I, I, I wasn't clear about this until they uh, told us verbally or face-to-face, uh, -face, and that is the, the equipment won't arrive at the, at the same time, at you know, all in one package. It will arrive in pieces, and what they need is for us to designate where that equipment will arrive and that that equipment will uh, uh, be in a place that has uh, room temperature and there's some security there. And so um, with, uh, with this, um, then um, we would be at some point immediately following up, telling them uh, the address uh, where that equipment uh, will be, will, be uh, uh, will, will start to be delivered. So again, because it, it won't arrive in one piece or arrive in several pieces. And so, and um, and they don't want, or they recommend strongly that it not be in one location, and then, and then uh, when time comes to assemble everything, for it to be moved to another location. All of that that movement then, uh, you know, puts at risk the, uh, the 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 integrity of the equipment. Okay. Any comments, questions from the council? <coughs> uh, I think that uh, we do have, uh, like I mentioned, a proposal from the co uh, county commission that I've uh, asked the manager. I think I've expressed it to the council members to uh, respond to that uh, based on input that he's receiving from the council members, uh, respond to that by Friday. Um, but I think we need to make sure that DFA knows where we're headed on this. Of course, anything can be uh, changed or modified as development uh, change. So what I'd like to do is <coughs> entertain a motion to approve accepting the grant and immediately after, I'd like to get direction from the council to direct staff to work with Kit Carson Electric to have a lease so that uh, <coughs> that is acceptable to the council so that we can uh, instruct DFA where to deliver the equipment, understanding that this may change. <coughs> uh, uh, Mr. Mayor, I, I would be recommending, if that, if, if, if with your permission, that that uh, just to be clear, that it be a lease purchase, not a so much of a so much of a lease. Okay. So, if there's any not any questions on the item F, I'd entertain a motion to approve. So moved, sir. Second. Motion and second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 And those opposed, motion carries. At this time, I'd like to <coughs> see if it's the consensus of the council to direct our manager to bring a lease purchase agreement to the next council meeting and put on the agenda a um, uh, direction to where this equipment will be installed, namely the Kit Carson Electric Command Center. Is that okay with the council? To Mr. Mayor, I, I would agree to that uh, pending uh, discussions with the county and, and the other stakeholders as to, uh, there, there may be come something else that comes up in the meantime I think we have a, a little bit of time before we have to tell DFA specifically where it needs to go, but uh, it, so that the, the community knows that we have some direction at least. And, you know, I'd say sure. I would say to to look at the uh, Kit Carson Command Center, uh, but not exclusively at this particular point in time. Okay, 
and, and that uh, this will give, uh, <coughs> I think our next meeting will be March 12th? Yes. So that gives uh, a couple of weeks, and uh, that's what I heard loud and clear from DFA is a couple of weeks, within a couple of weeks, he'd like to know where this equipment is going. And this will give the, an opportunity if we have to call a special meeting, we can certainly <coughs> do it. Okay, Mr. So Mayor, so would this give us a, a, a clearer picture as far as the lease agreement, as far as more solidified numbers yep. with regards to where we're going? It is, it is my hopes that uh, they would negotiate with Kit Carson Electric the final, a final lease uh, purchase with all the numbers that, uh, based on input that uh, the manager has received from the council. Okay. Okay. Is that the consensus of the, the council? Yes. Okay. Okay, next we'll move on to <coughs> item G, resolution 1314, termination of joint powers agreement for dispatch ser services effective December 31st, 2013. Consideration and possible approval of Resolution 1314 directing the town manager to notify the village of Cuesta, village of Taos Key Valley, and Taos County that the town will terminate, terminate the current joint powers agreement for dispatch services effective December 31st, 2013, and to continue to work with those partners to reach a new and more effective agreement. Oscar. Uh, yes, sir. Mr. Mayor, members of council, uh, what this does is that it just takes a step further along the lines that we have been um, coming uh, up until now for months. Uh, we've been telling, um, uh, well, I, I've told you here publicly, recommended to you here publicly, that the current uh, joint powers agreement is, is not acceptable, it's not workable, the, the circumstances have changed, um, and, and um, uh, we're not at all comfortable, and, and, and we're not in a good position uh, with regards to the joint powers agreement. Uh, we've shared this with our stakeholders. Um, I, I myself have uh, uh, talked about this in many forms, and and so this is a, a this is just a continuation of that uh, position that the town has put forward. Uh, and so what this does is that um, it notifies everyone. It gives everyone a due notice that um, at the end of uh, of this uh, this the, the current year, uh, we will um, consider that the joint powers agreement terminated. Uh, at the same time, we uh, we continue and we urge all our partners to continue to uh, work towards a new joint powers agreement, as we have been doing so for uh, for well for months now. Uh, and uh, it also uh, puts on notice that uh, we want to call it um, um, call into play the the seven percent uh, clause that's in that agreement right now um, uh, by uh, by uh, contractual law. Anyway, we can call up uh, up until. Uh, up to six years of that. Uh, at this point, we're we're, uh, we're recommending only seven percent uh, start th starting this year. In other words, effective this year, and then another seven percent uh, with the next fiscal year, so that uh, we can uh, have the funding necessary to to uh, to move forward and and make the improvements that we have uh, pointed out to you need to be made in that uh, in our dispatch center. Anyway, that's that's uh, that's all it does. Uh, we are continuing to do what we have said all along that we wanted to do. And uh, this just takes another step further and makes it very clear. I will be communicating this uh, in writing and in person to our stakeholders at our Thursday meeting so that uh, they understand where, uh, where we stand with that. It should not be news to them. Uh, and we're just now um, uh, making it uh, very clear that, um, that we, we either have a new joint powers agreement or, or there will be no joint powers agreement. And you, you uh, continue to make with meet with the stakeholders weekly? Uh, monthly, we meet monthly, of course. Uh, well, actually, we, we, we meet with the, a technical group weekly, so all the stakeholders are, are invited to that meeting. They don't all come, uh, but uh, we meet every week, and so uh, the, the more technical questions are addressed in, in those meetings, uh, but um, the, the, the policy, the, 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 the bigger picture questions are addressed on our Thursday, me uh, on our monthly meetings, uh, the last Thursday of every month. And we, uh, we have, uh, I have met with Chairman Baroni and uh, Commissioner Blankenhorn as well. And uh, gentlemen, would you like to uh, speak at this time? Gentlemen? Uh, Steve, uh, Mr. Town Manager? Right, right here, yeah, that, that way they can get you recorded on the, on TV. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, Commissioner, welcome to our meeting. Thank you very much. Steve, Rick, welcome to our meeting. <laughs> Thank you. All right, well, I just had a couple of questions. And well, first off, appreciate very much your consideration of our offers. And, um, and, and you know, I, I'm sure that that'll be taken under 
uh, serious consideration, and we'll look forward to your response. Um, I, for one, you know, I, I certainly respect the council's uh, determination um, that the JPA and the current site no longer works for the town. Um, that is your prerogative, and uh, I understand it. I'm not sitting in your seat, uh, so I don't have the, uh, the full benefit of all of the considerations, but I do understand it. Um, I just wanted to make clear that from my reading of the JPA and from our legal staff's reading of the JPA, um, one year's notice is required. It, it's not, not 10 months, but one year. Um, we do understand that <clears throat> there is a clause that allows for a 7% increase, but there's nothing in the agreement or in our history together as partners um, that would allow for a six-year <laughs> uh, total of, of that 7% increase, and so I'm not sure exactly where that came from. Uh, I appreciate the fact that you're not uh, moving forward with that, but it's my understanding that every year there was some communication between the town and the county, um, and some of it was written and signed that said, okay, this year we're going to give you another 288 grand, and that that was accepted. So um, from our perspective, we have no... Uh, recollection or uh, uh, belief that there was ever any breach of our agreement. And so with no breach, then we obviously have to follow the terms, and the terms are one year, and of course it, it remains the town's responsibility to the county, the town, and the community at large to ensure uh, the safety of the community by maintaining the operation of both the PSAP and the dispatch for that one year period. Um, and hopefully that gives us sufficient time to come to a decision that's going to be best for the community. Um, is it, uh, I, and, I, and then I just have one question, which is, um, is it a prerequisite of the grant agreement that a JPA be entered into before we, uh, the, the community benefits from the new PSAP equipment? No, Oscar. No, uh, no, sir. No, it's not a requirement. So, you know, it's it's going to be a numbers decision for us. Uh, you guys have have your own criteria to make the decision. Um, if if you choose to go ahead with the grant agreement and install uh, the equipment at the Kit Carson Center, <coughs> and we at that point we'll have all of the costs, I'm sure, in front of us. There's been so many different numbers thrown about. We're not really sure where any of them are. But at that point, you know, obviously we'll have to make that budgetary decision as to whether to uh, go in with, with you guys on that or establish our own dispatch uh, in a building that we don't have to pay rent on. So, um, again, you know, I'm sure there's some questions that you have about the alternative that we, we've presented, which is basically a building that's been paid for, that we have money within the budget to improve, $150,000 that we believe we can bring it up to accepted standards for this kind of an operation. You guys will need some proof for that, I imagine, but just work with our staff and, and, and we'll get you, uh, we'll answer the questions that you have. And uh, then you can consider that from your own, your own budgetary position and uh, we'll stay in communication and hopefully we'll all find a place where we can do this together. Great, thank you. Thank you, uh, Commissioner and uh, Mayor, uh, Councilors. Uh, thank you for the opportunity for us to be able to address you uh, this evening. And uh, I just wanna echo uh, Commissioner Blankenhorn's uh, comments there, uh, you know, because those are all of our concerns and, and the ability for us to meet with you guys, the ability for us to come together on some sort of a joint agreement. You know, I think, you know, we talk about culture, we talk about our, our community, you know, we're all one <coughs> and we need to work together and I think if we can come together in some aspect of this, I think it shows good faith between the town and the county that we can actually work together. You know, in the past there's been history that we haven't you know, basically we have a new commission. We're willing to sit down and roll up our sleeves and work with you guys. We don't want to put the boxing gloves on. We want to put the work gloves on to work together. So I think, you know, this is 
an opportunity, one of the opportunities that we have to show good faith that we're working together and not moving on ahead of us without us, um, you know, just deciding this is the way you guys are gonna do it, you're gonna follow us or you guys gonna stay behind, hide the ball from us. We wanna be able to play with the same ball on the same court and work together with you guys. I think it's a great opportunity to show that the town, the, our, all, our, all our constituents that we can work together for a common goal of our community. So, thank you. Thank you. Mayor Cordova, Councilman, Mr. Uh, Manager Rodriguez. Um, we believe that this proposal that we put in front of you is, addresses all the immediate needs that you guys have brought before us. Uh, the staff has worked diligently to try to bring up different avenues and different um, proposals uh, to the council. We have proposed two of them. Doesn't mean that those are the only two proposals that are on the table. Uh, if there's other proposals that you guys want to counter, uh, counter offer or talk to us about, we'd be more than willing. And, you know, I'm not going to echo everything that was said by our commissioners. I just want to say that the, the county stands ready to work. We want to work together with you guys and we're hoping that we can uh, continue to do that in the future. So thank you. Thank you. Rick. Mr. Mayor, Council, uh, Town Manager, um, as always, I appreciate the opportunity to address you and work with you and work with a number of you in different uh, venues. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Mayor, I think you and I, about almost two years ago, I guess to this month, uh, we're over in the Kit Carson Command Center in a pretty scary situation where we were getting phone calls from senior citizens that were piled under blankets, had no heat. We couldn't even tell them if and when there would be heat. Uh, electric started going out, uh, pipes started freezing and our housing authorities and our lower income housing. Um, and yet, uh, to me it was amazing that that day the first time we had scheduled an interjurisdictional exercise to start at one o'clock and the gas started going off at 10 and I ignored the first email because I just thought it was part of the exercise and I'd get to it. Um, but amazingly, we all wound up finding a room, getting together and no one died, nobody went to the hospital, nobody's pets froze. Um, and historically, that was the coldest, longest period that this community had ever experienced. The largest number of people that had been out without heat, electricity. Um, and we came out of that room, I felt, a different group of people. In the beginning, I remember uh, Kathy Conley and I were sitting there, and Aletha was saying, um, come on, work together, work together, and everybody's in their own groups. And literally, I got up and we pushed the desks into each other. And by the end of that, I think we built relationships between um, the Ski Valley, uh, Cuesta, Red River, all of us that we shuttled around resources, the National Guard that um, we've kept to this day. And th there was really one thing to admire in that, and that is that we all agreed at the beginning we would speak with one voice so that people wouldn't be scared and confused, um, that we would operate on one system of channels of communication to the public and between our fire departments that had to go house to house, the gas companies, the National Guard, and everybody. And that was so critical that we innately knew how to do that. And we had really good people, a lot of whom aren't here with us if that happens again, and that's a concern to me. Um, I would hate to see that we would lose in a time of peace and comfort, and our heat does work, and it's warm and cozy, uh, what scared the heck out of all of us uh, for five straight days. Uh, and that was that in a crisis, if we didn't work together, we were all going to fall apart. Um, I, I want to reiterate what the county manager said and that um, in working on the offer we presented to the town, we were going down two paths. And I don't, did not realize till tonight in talking to the town manager, there may have been a little confusion. Uh, and that is that we left our joint work session with an agreement that staff would work together as much as it took to come up with an offer, to come up with uh, some kind of settlement that could resolve all these problems and we could all agree on. But the following day or two days later, we received an email that said, very, in a very detailed fashion, we need a written proposal by X date and it needs to include these factors because we have some time frames to meet. And we, we didn't take that as a change of course or offense, just that we understood the urgency that the town had on, on both issues, the command center 
and the airport. <clears throat> so what we were trying to do is to give the town and the elected officials as much time as possible is to get you something in writing before March 1st that was a starting point for a discussion with the intention that we invited you to make counter proposals knowing that we would then get together as staff and work out the final details. But until the county commissioners could meet and I could, and we hadn't had an opportunity to understand, some of them may have just said, no, we don't want to talk. Some of them may have said, we're willing to put in this much money or that much money. We did not want to negotiate with you without, in, in bad faith, knowing that at some point I might bring that back and these guys would say no. And we expected the same from the town that Oscar would take whatever proposal and say, look, I don't recommend you do this, we should do that, and that we would get together. That door is still open, it's never been closed. And I, I do wanna say that despite, I don't know, I don't, where, don't know where that perception came from. In the three years that I've been with the county, and I've been involved in all that time in the negotiations annually for the contracts on the cost for the command center, um, for the E911, I've even served as the emergency manager at, at various times throughout that three years. I've always been at your table across here in town hall when we talked about money. Um, I've always been part of that team that talked. Eventually, we needed a communication center that we were all part of. There's no question we're all committed to that. But there was never a time where the county dragged its feet and didn't respond to an offer that was made in writing or to me or to the former county managers. Um, for some reason, between the meeting uh, 18 months ago that you were at, Mayor, and that we met at the uh, county uh, conference room, uh, that DFA was present and everyone was present. And we, we had a draft JPA that, in fact, the county had proffered at that point. I don't know what happened. You know, we changed staff or what happens in those things. There's elections get in the way, um, but there really wasn't dialogue on either side. So it wasn't that it didn't become a priority for us. I think there was a quiet agreement at some point between some of us that let's deal with this after the election in January so it doesn't become a political issue. And uh, I think we've been working on it diligently since then. I, I would beg your indulgence for one last thing and that is that um, the JPA since the beginning and uh, um, I like to think that uh, the town manager and I have worked very well and very sincerely on, on all these very complex issues that are tough sometimes <coughs> to deal with. We have all always <coughs> represented at those stakeholder meetings to the other partners that the, the importance of the JPA was to create some authority that this didn't get dumped on the town. Uh, for months I would go to the meetings and nobody ever showed up for stakeholder meetings unless they had to complain and then they would come up here. Um, and that was unfair. And sometimes you guys didn't get paid. But we always represented that the big decisions, and I think we've done that as, as uh, soon back as the uh, work session. Um, we've said that hiring the director, determining how many staff, determining where the center is located, determining the formula involved in there and determining the budget needed to be the responsibility of that group, not us as the people at the table representing the town and the county. And I would just caution you that if you make all those decisions and it appears that people are dragging their feet on the JPA, it's because, well, then what's the point of the JPA if somebody's already made the decisions and it's just a promissory note that now you're obligated to pay your share, but you don't know what that is. And I would hate to see us backed in the corner. I think everybody the Forest Service, based on our discussions, the um, uh, Ski Valley, Cuesta, are all waiting for the two big boys on the block to work it out. And it, it's up to us. We have an obligation to the entire community to knock that agreement out in the next couple of weeks. I thank you for your time. And I, I know you've got deadlines to meet, and we appreciate that. We'll work with you on that. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. Um, <clears throat> you know, I just want to say that uh, and I, I remember that time when we were uh, in the, uh, when we came here to see what are we gonna do. Then the county was out of gas. There was one entity that had a backup system and that, was, that bailed us out literally as far as a command center. And that was Kit Carson Electric. You know, they, they, they had the redundancy, they had the, the, uh, the tele 
telecommunications, the uh, ability to communicate, and we all said this is the best place to go. The c command center didn't have its CEO yet, and we issued a temporary CEO to that building to provide for additional uh, uh, refuge or, or uh, individuals that needed help. So, that, so I remember that very clearly. Just we forgot to mention one key key player that really helped all these government entities, you know, uh, provide for our constituents. The um, I can tell you what happened with the breakdown of after that meeting, the stakeholders, and uh, I think you were the chairman there, Commissioner Baroni. Uh, uh, I requested numerous meetings, and as a result of the majority of the commission, they declined. They declined, and I think you can attest to those numerous meetings that several issues that were coming to the forefront that we wanted to meet and I would have to report back to my council then that the county simply wasn't interested in meeting. And um, they said that it was because of our election coming up and I said, okay, after the election, after the town election, then let's <coughs> meet. And they said, we don't want to meet. We, we have no interest in meeting with the town and that was a previous couple of your commissioners and I know your hands were tied, Commissioner Baroni, and, but I, I just want to let you know that we did make a good faith effort always to keep trying. Um, <laughs> You're, you're, you're absolutely right. The, uh, the, the board should, uh, of this JPA should, uh, and I, don't, right, I think right now not, is not the forum to really discuss, uh, you know, well, who's at fault, why is it this way now, because, uh, you know, I think there's still some more dialogue that needs to be uh, uh, had between staffs to work out a win-win a, a situation, and I'm confident that that can, that can happen. But uh, a couple of weeks ago, the, the beginning of... Uh, of uh, before this joint work study session, we all sat down for lunch and said, okay, what is it that we want to accomplish? And it was the direction of the chairman to the county staff and the direction of me to our town staff is, let's hammer out the JPA so that at the 11th meeting of our town meeting, we can have a JPA that the governing body is comfortable with. And the county assured me that they were gonna work on a JPA that staff can recommend that they were gonna be assured of. Instead, we got either moved to this place or this place. So in, in essence, you were doing the, basically the same thing that you're saying that we're doing here in telling us, the county telling us where to move instead of entering into a JPA that, which by the board would decide all those factors. So you know, we're, we're kind of in a precarious situation here and in no way do we wanna make it confrontational. I think the bottom line is we're committed. I think the council is committed. Uh, I have no doubt in my mind that staff is committed to work with the county come up with a win-win. In this uh, termination, uh, we will comply with the current JPA, 100%. And if in that, I'm not sure how staff came up with the December 31st deadline, but if it has to be a year uh, for effective, I mean, I have no problem uh, to modifying that so that we're compl in full compliance with the current JPA. But I must re reiterate, the current JPA just doesn't work for the town, uh, you know, for a variety of reasons. And I think we've, we've hashed that out so many times. So. That is our goal, is to get a JPA, but the time is clicking on all these things and we we just feel if we don't put a timeline and a time period on it, we just feel that we will never get there. Since I've been on this council, I've heard that the JPA just doesn't work. Since I've been on the council, it's been moving forward with the command center. We, we uh, encouraged Kit Carson, we dialogued with Kit Carson stakeholders. This is where we what, what we wanna do. We as governing bodies lobbied our legislator, Representative Gonzalez carried that flag for us to receive $175,000 to get seed money to do the architectural drawings for the command center. We encouraged Udall and Bingaman to get a $500,000 grant to assist with this loan, <coughs> to walk away from the command center that we have worked so hard to come, uh, come uh, to, to, to get to and say, no, we changed our mind. To me, it's just, it's just bad government. I, I just, I, that's what, what I feel. And I think if we put, put all our heads together, take the politics out of it, we will come to a win-win situation with what was discussed since 2002, 2001, and that is the Kit Carson Command Center. So uh, members of the council, uh, Brian, if there's, uh, I'm not sure why the December 13th, uh, December 31st, 2013 deadline was put on there. If that's not, what the, the current JPA says, then you know, we'd be happy to change it. I'm not sure what the rationale was for that. Well, Mr. Mayor, just to answer the question, it's on there because the stakeholders have been on notice of this since well before December 31st, going back to last fall. So theoretically, we could have made this much <coughs> earlier date 
we chose December 31st because that's a year plus several months of notice. But in an effort to be formal, to formalize that, uh, it's I, I see no problem in in <coughs> making it effective. Uh, it can be amended. Yeah. Okay. Any comments from the council? Questions? Council Member Baker. Thank you, Mayor Cordova. Chairman Baroni, Commissioner Blankenhorn, Mr. Archuleta, Mr. Bellis, thank you very much for coming. We do want to work together. Uh, it's a true statement that in the past the commission and the council didn't work together. It doesn't matter why, it doesn't matter that we didn't. What matters is we're here today and we got to work together and move forward for tomorrow for our constituents. Dispatch is our number one priority. It's public safety. Our current dispatch does not provide medical dispatch services. It just provides general dispatch. We got to get there. We got to find the revenue to make it happen. We got to place these people in the right facility. The current facility is full of asbestos, as has been proven by reports. Uh, there's a few folks in the community that will argue that it's not, but we owe it to the public that it's right, that it's full of uh, asbestos, and we got to move forward. And you know, there's one member in the back, you know, shoving his hands and saying no, but it doesn't matter, Mr. Sanchez. You can wave your hands all you want, uh, Mr. Baroni. Sanchez, you and this I. Is not a public hearing. This is not, uh, Mr. Baroni, uh, Mr. Mr. Sanchez, I have the floor, please. Uh, Mr. Baroni, you and I spent got an hour on the phone yesterday on several different occasions. It's beautiful dialogue that we're now starting to have between commissioners and counselors and the mayor that didn't exist before. I really believe that if we keep that dialogue going, we're gonna be able to work on any issue, whether it's airport annexation, dispatch, there's multiple issues that are gonna come in front of us. These are not the only two issues, and if we work together, we can achieve a solution that's gonna be a win-win for our constituents for public safety, and as the mayor stated, taking the politics out of it, and even taking out the outlayers, the one or two people that have very radical ideas that we shouldn't do what we should do. Well, we are governing bodies, we're elected by our people, for our people, and I believe that with all of our heads, we put them together, we work together, we'll get there, folks. So again, thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Silva. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Chairman Baroni, um, Commissioner Blankenhorn, uh, Mr. Manager, Assistant Manager, I just want to say uh, something real brief and simple. Is well, first of all, I appreciate you all being here, and I know that um, you guys are are here because you, you're you're trying to do what's right. Well, we too uh, are are doing the same thing, so we're on the we're on the right path. We just need to to continue to work together, and uh, uh, I just want to say that whatever it takes, as 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 one councilman to uh, do what's right and what is gonna be in the best interest of our constituents, um, that's, 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 I commit to you and to the people of the house. And I know that uh, my colleagues here uh, all feel the same way. So I think we're headed in the right path. So we just need to roll up our sleeves and, and uh, put on the working gloves, like you say, Mr. Co uh, Commissioner Baroni, and not the boxing gloves, and uh, just do what's right. Thank you. Okay, Council Member Peralta. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Commissioners, managers, uh, I do truly appreciate, you know, in, in the meeting, joint meeting we had, uh, uh, I indicated that there was a, a desire and a need for urgency in this. And I do truly appreciate uh, you're making your offers to us and, and we're truly considering them and uh, there will be some communication back to you because there are some questions that we have. Uh, and it's just clarification. It's not necessarily saying, no, this isn't gonna work at all. It's just, we need to clarify some things and get more information in order for us to, to be able to uh, analyze it in, in the way that you expect us to do that. Uh, uh, I, I think it is a, a move forward for all of us to, to work together and come to a solution that we have. I don't think there's any of us that wanna stop anything or, or change the, the uh, the road that we're trying to go down together, we just want to make sure that we are all on the same book and page, and that we understand each other's position, and, and that in doing so doing, we can come to a, a, a compromise or a meeting of the mind so that uh, we can do what's proper for all of our constituents. And, and I do truly appreciate all that you've done to uh, help us come together and help us move forward on this. Uh, but it's, it's gonna take a little bit of time, but I'm glad that, that you gave us what you did because now we can speed forward a little bit more on this. And uh, 
but I, I've had an opportunity to look at it. I do have a few little questions and uh, that I've asked the manager to, to, to work with you on to get some questions for the council uh, so that we can uh, educationally, or, or how should I say, educatedly discuss uh, uh, your proposals and uh, in order for us to make any kind of counters or, or clarifications or massaging or anything else that needs to happen in a, in a timely manner. And I think that's what you expect of us too, is for us to get back to you as quickly as we possibly can. We ask that of you, so we have to expect ourselves to do the same for you. And again, uh, on my behalf and the council's behalf and the mayor's behalf, I'd like to very much appreciate and express my appreciation for your diligence and, and your hard work to uh, help this community out. Councilmember Gonzalez. Commissioners and managers, thank you for attending the meeting. I, I think for so long it's been so far overdue that we've actually met in the middle and agreed to work together because it had been so long. I've had working relationships with Commissioner Baroni for years um, in the construction industry. Um, I really appreciate it because it, it while we're not always gonna agree on issues, I mean, we can at least ag agree to disagree. And the one thing I look for more than anything is the open dialogue that we both bring to, to our collective constituents out there. Um, I don't think any one of us has any personal gains to, to gain out of this other than what we expect and what our constituents expect to do, and that's to give them the best possible services that, that they are entitled to and that, that they're paying for. Um, so with that, again, thank you for the open dialogue. I don't think I can say too much more from what my, my colleagues have said up here also, but I, I too give you my pledge that I will work with you in any way, shape, or form possible to form the best form of government that we have in our county-city relations. So thank you again for coming to our meeting. It really shows that you, you, you care. If you, if you didn't care, you wouldn't be here. So thank you. Mayor, councilors, thank you for this opportunity for us to address you and, and, and uh, you know, it's the health, safety, and welfare of our whole community that's at stake here, and we just want to make sure that we're working together for that betterment. So thanks again. Commissioner Baroni, uh, uh, Commissioner Blankenhorn, uh, Mr. Bellis, Mr. Archuleta, thank you all. Uh, as I mentioned, I've, I have directed the manager to respond to the proposal by Friday. Uh, he's had numerous meetings with each of the councilors just to get what are their questions, what are their, what, get some input uh, from the, the, the council. Uh, and uh, issue a response, and in many cases may have a counter proposal within that response. So, uh, you know, we're we're here, we're committed to working with the, with you, and I'm um, I am confident that if we really roll up our sleeves and and really hammer this out, we can make this work. Thank, so you. thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. This is not a public hearing, uh, Mr. Sanchez. This is not this is not a. Uh, who are you directing the question to? Uh, at th this, I'm not, I'm not going to open it up for public hearing. No, it's not you, the you can you can email me your question, yeah, Mr. Sanchez. Is, is this going to connect the community to spending a lot of necessary money? Don't you think you ought to have a public hearing? I opened up the public hearing uh, about a month ago. I opened up a public hearing about on it. So. You're not aware of it. You were you were present. You were present, Mr. Sanchez. You were present at that meeting when I opened it up. <clears throat> Next, we will. Uh, so this this item uh, is to terminate the joint powers agreement with the effective date, a year, from today's action. Uh, do we have anything formal on on the on the stakeholders as you mentioned that the notice has been given? Is there is there any formal action? The written notice, Mr. Mayor, was the agenda items and the discussions that were mailed out to the addresses that are in the JPA. It is of no particular importance if the council is more comfortable giving the notice for a year from today, we can easily make that the notice day. Okay. That's the pleasure of the council. I would entertain a motion uh, accordingly. And uh, with, it, with that motion, direction to staff to uh, evaluate the, uh, the yearly um, uh, budget that has been uh, uh, submitted and if there's any supporting documents say that we've agreed to keep the, the amount the same. Entertain a motion? So moved, Mr. Mayor. Question? Uh, let me get a second and then we'll do a discussion. If second, any Mr. Mayor. Motion and a second. Uh, in discussion, Councilmember Peralta? Uh, Mr. Mayor, just for clarification, that last paragraph in the resolution concerning the 7%, is that just for the year going forward or is that going backwards as well? Uh, the current year and uh, also 
uh, for the next fiscal year so that they can begin to prepare for their budgets for the next fiscal year. So it would be 7% going back to July of this year? Yes, Of sir. this fiscal yes, year? Yes, sir. And then half of? No, no and then 7% and then starting uh, July of, of next year, uh, well, oh. this upcoming year. But, but the JPA would end in roughly about eight months? Well, the, the so way it works is they, they pay by quarters. Every, right. Everyone pays into it by quarters. And so the 7% would be effective for every payment that you make into the, uh, into the JPA. Uh, up until when that terminates. Until, now, ter until terminates. Until it terminates. Now, uh, of course, our, our, our expectations are, and, and I'm confident, too, that the uh, stakeholders feel this way, too, is that we will come to a new JPA and, and that uh, we will, that, that deadline will, uh, will, will, will never come close. Yeah, I, I understand that, but I'm just saying is that just for, for uh, uh, information to the public, uh, you know, and that is that the request in the resolution is for an increase in this year's budget yes, sir. of 7% and then an increase in next year's budget of 7%, but that would only kick in as long as the current JPA is in place. So if we were to come up with a new JPA by July 1st, for example, that would no longer be in effect in the new JPA and the agreements under that for operational expenses would kick Yes, kick yes, they, they, they would be totally new budgets, totally new arrangements, and uh, the 7% would be something that falls by the wayside. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. In all likelihood, though, a higher cost for everyone. I mean, we, we all realize that, uh, that that thing's been underfunded for many times, as I've uh, Rick pointed out to you in public here. Yes. Okay. Uh, any further questions, comments? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. <coughs> Next, we will go to item 9A, public hearings, ordinance, consideration possible approval of, ordinan of an ordinance 13-05, which annexes two properties located at 651 and 671 Gustorf Road. The properties both have water and sewer infrastructure available. The Planning and Zoning Commission have reviewed the application at a public hearing held on December 5th, 2012, and recommends approval of the act annexation. Matt. Yeah, uh, state your name for the record, sir. Francis Montoya. President Francis Montoya, welcome to our meeting, Thank sir. Are you, are you the property you. owner or the agent? Uh, no, the property owner. Property owner. Uh, welcome to our meeting, sir. Thank you, uh, Mayor, uh, members of the council. As you stated in the uh, agenda, this is uh, an ordinance to annex two properties uh, just off of Gustorf, um, basically across the street and south of Taos High School. Um, there was a public hearing uh, by the Planning and Zoning Commission, um, and their recommendation is to move forward and adopt the ordinance to annex the property. Um, and if the council chooses to approve the ordinance, then the next item on the agenda is to rezone the property. Okay. Uh, I think at this time, since it is a public hearing, I will open it up to public hearing. At this time, is there anyone that would like to speak for or against this uh, application at this time? Seeing none, I will close the public hearing and go to questions from staff. Any questions uh, from uh, the council members? No, uh, sir, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor do I respond that I'm in favor of this or? Oh, no, no, I, oh, well, oh, you're, you're the applicant, so. Oh, yeah, I yeah, so, okay. Yeah. But, but if you want to say, say a few things, I mean, that's, that's fine. I okay. mean, that, we uh, we, we welcome that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Sure. <laughs> Council Member Pedalta. Yeah. Mr. Mayor, I, I just one thing is I, I would have liked to have seen the petition for annexation. Uh, in going through the information here, since we're actually annexing the parcels, it doesn't say anything about the ownership. And so it would be kind of nice to know who's petitioning the town to annex their property into the into the proper into the town. And uh, I know exactly where the properties are and all that, but I just. I, I was curious about who was petitioning the town. And Council Member Perarta, I think somewhere in the fine print, I looked very hard for it and I did find Mr. Montoya's name, but it's it's like way down in the weeds. And, uh, in the uh, ordinance or in the? Uh, I don't remember, but in one of the documents, I saw the name. <coughs> and uh, so I had the same question. Uh, Matt, Matt, on uh, these both lots, uh, you're the property owner? That's right. So in this case, you're the... Well, myself and my sister. Loretta oh, okay. Uh -huh. okay. Okay. 
so you represent 50% of the property mm. and she represents the other. That's correct. Yeah. So, okay. Thanks. Mr. Council Member Silva. I have a question for staff. Matt, this uh, lot, the 651 and 671, being that they're two separate owners and two separate uh, uh, descriptions and plats, um, can you make one motion to uh, uh, approve this uh, annexation or should uh, 651 be done first because it's the contiguous one and, and then uh, do the 671 mm -hmm. after? Um, I would suggest for the sake of just efficiency that they could be both, um, the ordinance could be adopted as one applying to both the properties. That was just my question, so mm -hmm. I don't know okay. if that's a legal I'm question. Not, I'm not positive if that's, there's a legal consequence to that or not. I would defer to the, the town attorney, but um, being that they were both heard at the same time to the Planning and Zoning Commission under the same application. Um, I think you would have to take one contiguous first and then the other over to the other. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> since both of them are both of them are applying at the same time to create to create a, a new boundary. Well, if just if the, anyone's interested in the town attorney's opinion, <laughs> <laughs> technically we should do the one that abuts first and then the next one as okay. two separate items. Okay. So the only question I have with that, and not to complicate matters, is. Uh, the planning uh, commission, how did they act on this? Uh, it was a motion to approve and recommend that it be annexed and then rezoned. That both the properties be annexed and then. <coughs> but they did them with both properties simultaneously. That's my recollection, yes, okay. uh, under one application. Uh, so I, I would, uh, I, I have no problem just make it for the record, just entertaining a motion to, to approve lot 651 first and then uh, that makes 671 contiguous. That's right. So um, at this time, uh, if there's any, any more dialogue, uh, sir, did you want to say? Well, you know, um, Mr. Mayor, I don't have any reference in my documents to uh, the address 651 uh, or 671. So I don't know which is the property that refers to in terms of, you know, what my ownership. Can anyone answer that for me? I'm, uh, I'm anticipating both of them would be approved. Oh, I see. Okay, so th both of those belong to uh, Loretta and myself, yeah. Okay. Okay. I just hadn't seen that. Thank you. Mr. Okay. So regardless of who the owner of 651 is, uh, Mr. Murray, I'd move to approve lot 651, uh, approve the annexation. <coughs> is there a second? Well, and if I might add, hold that's- on one Hold on one second. I'm sorry. Is there a second? Second, Mr. Mayor. Second and under discussion, sir? Yeah, uh, Mr. Mayor, I just wanted to indicate that Loretta uh, Robledo, my sister and myself, both own that property. So okay. it's joint ownership. Okay. Uh, Council Member Abeta first, and then we've got a Council Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Council Member Perarta, you were correct in item 9A. Uh, Mr. Montoya's name is not referenced. It's actually referenced in 9B under the staff report. So that's where I saw it. So in the future, Mr. Foster, as Council Member Perarta pointed out, right on top, let's flag out who the property owner is. I will make sure we do that. Okay. Any other, uh, Council Member Peralta, you have a question? Yeah, I just have a question because it looks like I don't see a difference between either ordinance. It looks like both properties are on the same on each ordinance. This ordinance is looking at uh, 13 uh, 06. It says this is ordinances to amend the lot to with respect to the properties located at 651 671. Uh, Council Member Peralta, the, 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 first, the first ordinance is on annexation. And the second one is for the zoning. assignment zoning. of the zoning. zoning that's being requested by the applicant. R14. Well, in, but you're right, they read the same. In, but in that case, I would say just because they're both on the same ordinance to be brought into the town, it doesn't make any difference which ones because you're making them contiguous automatically by naming them. We either owe you an ordinance if we're going to do them one at a time. That if it's, that or you can do them if you do them at the same. I still would prefer that we prepare a different ordinance and do them separately. You can rezone them together, but I prefer that we do the annexation lot by lot. So we would owe you an ordinance. We don't have an ordinance in front of you for the second lot. Does that pose a, a time constraint for you? No, there's no time constraint. Okay. Mr. Mayor. Yeah. We apologize Is for it, that. No, that's all right. Mr. Mayor, if I could ask okay. our uh, attorney again, 
Is there a, I believe in the past we've done uh, ordinances and in in annexing a group of properties together in one ordinance. So, and I mean, that's what we're doing here. So why can't we just leave it that way? Well, I won't speak for the past because I have trouble doing that. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> if we do it in one ordinance, we have to do the legal fiction that the one was done, it was contiguous, and then the second one was done. Of course, there's always the possibility, and the reason to suggest doing them separately is that one conceivably could be annexed and one conceivably not be annexed. So it's really not the a monumental difference. This is a, a request from a single property owner. We're not expecting an appeal. There's nobody that has standing to appeal except the gentleman sitting here. So it, it does not really matter. As a matter of course, in the future, if we do this, we will be doing these uh, lot by lot unless uh, there's some reason not to. Just simply because it could be that you would want to annex one and not the other. And given that, okay. yeah. Council Member, uh, given that it's the same property owner, um, I would recommend that we just go ahead and, uh, and to avoid any further hearings and such, that we go ahead and approve both under one ordinance. Because I don't foresee a, an appeal. I mean, it's the same property owner. So. I agree, sir. Yeah. So at this time, uh, <clears throat> if we can uh, withdraw the motion so that we can include both. I don't want to. <laughs> if, not, if not, we'll have if we don't, <laughs> Can't we yeah. just act on both of them? <laughs> well, we, well, we only have one ordinance. Oh, oh I see, I see, yeah, I see, that's, I see. That's okay. Yeah. All right, given that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We would have to make the application. I, I, with, I withdraw my motion to, uh, and I'll restate it, to read uh, both lots 651 and 671 to be approved for annexation. Okay, is that good with the second? Second. Okay. Uh, uh, any further discussion? <laughs> All those in favor? Uh, clerk, call the roll. This is a public hearing. Councilmember Beza? Yes. Councilmember Gonzalez? Yes. Councilmember Peralta? Yes. Councilmember Silva? Yes. I vote of four <coughs> in the affirmative, none in the negative. The ordinance is passed and the properties are annexed. Then we'll go to item B, consideration approval of an ordinance to amend the Town of Taos <coughs> official zoning map with respect to properties located at 651 and 671 Gustorf Road, these properties would be zoned from Taos County Rural Area to R14 Multifamily <coughs> Residential. The Planning and Zoning Commission reviewed the application at a public hearing and recommends approval of the annexation. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think your your announcement uh, uh, says it all. This is Approval a, a of the zone change, yeah. <coughs> the zone change annexation. instead of the annexation. Yeah, okay. This would be an ordinance to rezone both of the properties that were just annexed to R14. There are uh, adjacent properties that are also zoned uh, R14. This was heard at public hearings by the Planning and Zoning Commission and they recommend approval. Okay. Uh, at this time it is a ordinance, so I would open it up to public hearing. This time is there anyone that would like to speak on this application at this time? Seeing none, go to I uh, will close the public hearing and go to questions from the council. Council members, what is the pleasure? Move for approval, sir. Second. Motion to approve. Any further discussion? Clerk, call the roll, please. Council member Silva? Yes. Council member Peralta? Yes. Council member Gonzalez? Yes. Council member Beta? Yes. So I have a vote of four in the affirmative. None of the negative, the zone change is approved. Thank Great. you. Mr. Mayor, thank Good you, luck. council members. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh -huh. Thank you. Good luck on your property. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> okay, item 10, matters from the mayor and council. Oh, I'm sorry. We have to go to item H, public H. works department review. And Mr. Mayor, and it's a good thing we didn't forget him. He, he, uh, uh, the public works director has worked very, very hard. The staff as well has worked, have, uh, worked very hard on this presentation. Uh, there is a, a very important message that uh, will be delivered here, uh, and I'll just go ahead and get to the punchline just so that it's never missed, and that is that we are at a very critical point right now with regards to our infrastructure, uh, particularly our streets. Um, for the past four years, uh, we, in essence, suspended, was it four years, uh, correct me, maybe, since 06. Since 06. 
since uh, 2006, uh, the town, in essence, suspended its um, str uh, uh, resurfacing program. It used to be standard at about $400,000 a year, even back then. And the town has, uh, in essence, suspended that to just a couple of thousand dollars every year. So uh, at the way uh, streets work is that they'll, they'll take a little beating without maintenance for a while, but then after a while, the moisture begins to penetrate. The surface gets into the subsurface, and then <coughs> Uh, you have deterioration that cannot be corrected with just normal maintenance and has to, and you're, you're in essence in a situation where you have to completely rebuild a lot of that surface. And so um, what you will be hearing right now is that we are now at that stage and um, if we don't, if you don't uh, quickly change that, that we'll have a, a much, much deteriorated, uh, much more expensive infrastructure to, to pick up. Anyway, without further ado, I'll p pass it on to staff. Mr. Polly Worstwick. Or uh, Mrs. Ass Assistant Town Manager first. Yes. Mr. Mayor, Council Members, um, I think Oscar, you covered it pretty much. Um, Fringe is responsible for the largest department within the town of Taos. He has approximately 50 employees in seven divisions. Um, he has already brought before the governing body his presentation on wastewater and water. So today we'll be hearing his presentation on um, the remainder of the divisions, which include fleet transit, recycling, landfill, and streets. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, Oscar, Abigail, um, I'll try and make this short and sweet, and thank you for not forgetting me. I was, <laughs> I was about to go postal on you guys. <laughs> Chief. <laughs> anyway, uh, with that, we'll get started. Um, what is before you is, is our presentation. It is a little lengthy, so please bear with me, and I'll try and answer any questions at the end of the presentation. Uh, we are members of APWA, SWANA, Wastewater Association, Recycling Coalition, Community Transportation Association of America, uh, the New Mexico Pub Public Work or Public Transit Association, and the Northern Pueblo Region Regional Planning Organization. Um, we operate all of the um, divisions within Public Works under these guidelines that are provided to us. Uh, the uh, Northern Pueblo's Regional Planning Organization is the, organiz is the liaison between local government and state government and the federal government. We um, submit our applications for consideration for funding for any of the roadway projects that we submit um, on an annual basis. So that's what that, that's what that is. Um, the duties and responsibilities of the um, public works um, of course is the street division. We maintain 44 miles of paved roads, um, 5.7 miles of graveled roads, uh, which are mainly up in the Weimar area, um, street sweeping and snow removal programs, uh, and maintain 13 parking lots. Um, under our fleet division, we maintain a fleet of 139 pieces of equipment and or vehicles. They're broken down into uh, 72 light, tr light duty trucks and sedans. 14 dump and um, transport trucks, uh, 30 heavy pieces of equipment, 23 miscellaneous pieces of equipment, which are uh, trailers, compressors, uh, trash pumps, things of that nature, target boards. Um, our transit division, we operate four programs within the division. They are outlined as the, our fixed route, Taos Ski Valley, Taos Express, and the ADA Handyvan, which of course is the American with Disabilities Act. Um, we <coughs> oversee uh, capital projects in the amount of 203,000. Uh, we manage a fleet of 19, which are broken down into 17 buses, one sedan, and one maintenance truck, and we'll get into that under the assets uh, portion of this. And of course, we manage an advertising program on each one of the Chile Line buses, which has proven to be um, uh, successful over the past three years. Um, duties and responsibilities for the landfill. Of course, we accept and weigh uh, refuse on a, on, a, on a daily basis. When the landfill is open, we operate six days a week. Uh, we control it on the state road, collect methane sampling or samples, and we sample six monitoring wells. Um, I'll get into a little bit more detail under, under the level of service that we provide uh, at the landfill. Um, our recycling division, we manage a central collection site, which is the recycling facility. Uh, we manage um, the sludge hauling program, which is 
the transport of sludge from the wastewater treatment facility to the Rio Rancho landfill for, for processing or acceptance. Uh, we collect uh, recyclables from, drop from uh, two other drop-off or three other drop-off locations, which are the Dunn parking lot, uh, the Taos library, and the town, or yeah, town hall, I'm sorry. Um, resources for the street, transit, and fleet. Um, in the streets, we have 10 full-time employees. Our assets include five dump trucks, three tractor trailers, one farm tractor, two street sweepers, one loader, and one motor grader. Um, our budget is 875235 and it's broken down in between operation and maintenance at 37% and wages at 63%. Um, in the transit division, we have eight full-time employees and far five part-time employees. Our assets, again, include 17 buses, the one sedan, and one maintenance truck. Our revenue is in the amount of 603192 Our budget is 582870 um, Operating costs are estimated at 20 or are 26% and the transit wages are at 74%. Um, the reason the revenue source is at 603 and our budget is at 582 is because the grants that we receive from the state and the federal government exceed uh, the match that the town puts forth for the operation, so we end up giving money back at the end of the year, and um, that, that's why there's, there's a, a, this appears to be in reverse, so. Um, in the, in the fleet, we have three full-time employees. Our assets include two service trucks, two scan machines, and two welders. Um, our budget is 171367 Operations are 35%, wages are 65%. And in any of those five divisions that were just mentioned, we have very little technology um, other than road equipment and um, uh, pieces of equipment that are used in the shop or shops, so. Resources for the landfill and the recycling. Uh, landfill, we have six full-time employees. Our assets are three trucks, one water truck, one roll-off, one scraper, one compactor, and one motor grader. Um, Ruben, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> someone fell asleep there, recycling. <laughs> Two full-time employees, one part-time employees. Uh, again, our assets, one truck, three bobcats, one roll-off truck, self-tie baler, a glass pulverizer, and a can crusher. Our budget is broke, is, is actually a combined budget. We have a, um, uh, that's uh, 938,304. Our revenue is $1.2 million. Again, uh, from that $1.2 million, there appears to be a reserve, and it is a reserve. It's it's our landfill closure fund and our cell replacement fund. So those that balance goes back into that, and, and again, that's um, something that is required uh, by the uh, by the uh, agency. Uh, our operations for the landfill. Um, are broken down in operation and maintenance costs for the uh, of 22 percent, and operation maintenance costs of the landfill are 78 percent. Our revenues are 21 percent in the recycling center, and 79 percent at the landfill. Um, the level of service that we provide under the street division. Uh, this is what Oscar was. Um, this is Oscar. This is what Oscar's opening remarks were, were about. We maintain 44 miles of roadway, and basically what we have done is we have broken it down into four categories. We have excellent, good, poor, or fair, or failed, and it's it's uh, pretty straightforward. The the roads that are that are um, um, identified as excellent are any anything that are newly paved, which in in this case we have. Uh, 3.73 miles of paved roads that are that are fairly new within within the last three years. Um, in good condition, we have 28.42 miles. In fair condition, we have 11.04 miles. 
Um, failed <coughs> is 0.81 miles. Um, and then of course we have the 5.7 miles of graveled roadways. And again, as, as Oscar mentioned in his opening remarks, it's been since 2006 since we um, uh, had a resurfacing uh, program. Um, and, and basically uh, what, we, what we consider a good condition is something that is um, salvageable, which means we can do um, a combination of crack sealing, pothole repair, and street overlay. And again, that'll, that'll extend the life of the roadway by about six to seven years. Um, if those three, um, if those three uh, phases are taken into consideration for each one of the roadways. So um, our sweeping program, um, we sweep daily in the historic district. If, if I may, French, yes, uh, just because it's, again, it's a very important thing here. Um, can you, will you just remind us where we would be, say, next year? Where the statistic will be next year if we don't do a resurfacing pro, uh, program uh, next year? Where will we be this time next year if we don't do a resurfacing program in terms of the percentage of rate? Uh, um, Mr. Mayor, member of the council, Oscar, uh, we would be at somewhere in the neighborhood of 80% of uh, fair or failing because th th those roadways would come back down again. It's been since 2006 that we entertain uh, a road surfacing program. Um, <coughs> Councilman Silva and I have had this discussion when we were doing this. Um, and again, our, our estimation was uh, five to seven years uh, that we'd be extending the life of the roadways. And again, we haven't done it since then. Um, and our, our investment <coughs> the last time was $404,000 for that surfacing program. So if we do not start to uh, reinvest in, in the infrastructure, um, those numbers will, will obviously be reversed and, and we would be paying more of a premium to rebuild the roadways versus rehabilitate them. Mr. Mayor? W one question before I can come from, why did we stop in 2006? Um, Mr. Mayor, the, that's about the time that we were experiencing um, some drastic budget cuts um, and it simply couldn't <coughs> be afforded. Um, okay. That's pretty much it. Council Member Abbey. Thank you, Mayor Cordova. Oscar, Abigail, and French, about a year plus ago, prior to the previous manager leaving, I believe we had identified approximately three hundred dollars to $400,000 that we were going to apply towards resurfacing. What happened with that? Um, Does anyone remember that? M Mr. Mayor, uh, Council Member Abeta, I believe that money was, was from the gas tax, is that what you're referring to? I don't remember where it was coming from exactly, but I knew we had identified a chunk of money. Yeah, there was a chunk of money that was identified, and that money was put towards the reconstruction of certain roadways, um, the Norte Lane being one of them. There was some money that was put towards Reed and Alexander to meet the match for the CDBG. Um, we have a couple of projects on the books right now. Uh, one is to uh, reconstruct a portion of Prostitas Road. Um, we will be doing Cantu Hill, um, Kisnel Street, and uh, Disgeorges Lane. Um, we'll be doing some, some minor repairs on Salazar Road. And we have an RFP out for engineering right now to do uh, Camino del Medio. So, so that's <coughs> where the money had been allocated. Thank you. Council Member Peralta. <coughs> when we construct a roadway, uh, the specifications for that road, for what life expectancy is that? Uh, you know, for example, the highway department, when they construct roads, it's a 10 year road or 15 year road, 25 year road, and they, they construct them to supposedly hold up for that length of time. Uh, for example, Paseo, Caño, uh, Paseo Pueblo Sur, that was done in about 70, around 80, 81. Mm -hmm. And that was a given a 25 year expectancy and it's falling apart now, so it's over the 25 <coughs> years. <coughs> but I'm just saying that do we set a, uh, 
a specific uh, specification for life expectancy on the roadways when, when it's done so that we would expect that if it's 10 years in 10 years, we're gonna have to resurface. Yes, uh, Mr. Mayor, Council Member Peralta, um, when, we, when we do a design for a roadway, there's a couple of considerations that are taken into, into account. Um, it, the roadway is designed for a 20, 20 year expectancy for um, traffic volumes. Um, but the reality of the construction site is that they're, they're normally at 12 and 15 years with the understanding that if there is a, um, an open graded friction course placed on the last layer that you would, you would get again five year, an, an additional five years out of it. Um, uh, and pretty, pretty much that's it. Um, if, if I may, uh, Councilman, just to add to this. Now, um, being clear about what a roadway is, um, when you construct a road, you, you construct, construct it permanently. So in essence, if you maintain it, if you maintain that surface, if that surface is, continues to be worked, et cetera, you can keep that road indefinitely. Uh, and you know, um, especially with the kind of traffic volumes that we see here, they're not terribly heavy, they're not uh, something that uh, we would expect would be tearing up the roads a lot. So uh, if, if they're just maintained, uh, in essence, these roads would, would last uh, forever. I guess if, if the moisture doesn't get through the surface and, and we do what's, uh, what's, uh, what's necessary to keep them up. Theoretically. Mm -hmm. Theoretically, there's, um, for, for instance, uh, the um, Placitas Road is, is, um, has a very shallow slope to it. So it creates, you know, holds up. If there's silt in the in the gutter way, um, some of the storm water will hold back. And if, if there's a, the slightest of crack in the in the asphalt, and that starts to penetrate, and the the freeze thaw, um, we start to experience that. Well, then we'll start u losing the roadway, and we'll start to see exactly what's happening out there. And and Placitas Road is um, the um, the newest portion, I believe, is a about 12 years old, okay. yeah. So, and, and the, the phases one and two are for 15 year old portions of the road, so. Vince, um, <coughs> if I, th I believe if we put a good plan to show how we're resurfacing our own city streets, I think we can get with DOT, like we did the last time when we showed that we were uh, fixing the intersection. Uh, because after the Cantu Hill down south, I mean, the road is pretty bad, uh, and th that's a DOT road. That's correct. So, and they were, we were able to plead the case that, look, we're gonna fix the intersection, the drainage of the plaza intersection. You guys have already done El Prado, and we have a really bad part in between, and they were able to come to the table and surface all that, even though we weren't up on the, on the list. Do you think we could still make that plea with them? Uh, m Mr. Mayor, the answer to to that is yes, and, and we continue to to dialogue with NMDOT, and and basically there's there's a couple of tools that I that I have used over the years to encourage them to consider doing work up in our our neck of the woods here, and one of them is um, the um, um, the traffic or the relief route study. And basically what the relief route study says is, instead of building a relief route, you gotta maintain your interiors and start paying attention to that. So every opportunity that I get, I, I remind them that it wasn't our study, it was their study, and we're just trying to abide by it. So yes. And if I need to <coughs> work with the administration, because uh, <coughs> one thing they like seeing is if we're putting local funds to anything, they will come to the table. This is clearly their responsibility, so this may prompt them to, mm -hmm. hey, let's help the town of Tell since they're fixing their exterior streets. They may may want to help us with that. Yes. Mr. So Mayor. Uh, Council Member Silva. Thank you. Uh, French, one of, the, one of the things that, um, you know, that we're talking about here is obviously the surfacing, but we know that some of our infrastructure uh, with regards to um, piping, sewer, water, <coughs> water lines, they're quite old. And uh, some of those failures will contribute to uh, the damages on the surface and or bad s uh, weakened subgrade, uh, which will eventually will uh, will see it in the in the surface. 
Um, what I know that we were doing a an analysis of our infrastructure. Where are we at with that? Because I mean, if we continue to put money into these roads, and eventually we're going to have to work on these utilities, we're going to be cutting through that uh, that that th those new or, or improved surfacing areas. So I mean, where where are we at with that? It kind of all ties together. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Council Member Silva, yes, you're absolutely right. That does tie together. Um, for for example, right now we're uh, we let out an RFP for engineering on Camino de la Merced, um, and that RFP included the design of the roadway as well as upgrades to underground utilities. So it, it that roadway will be rehabilitated from from the subsurface all the way out, and and that's how we have done the Norte Lane and Reed and Alexander and um, the newly constructed Chamisa Road. And, and I think that's exactly what we need to be doing. But w one other thing, one other uh, item that, uh, and I'm sure uh, you and I probably have touched on this in the past, is the quality control. Um, you know, we look at this Placitas Road here, and, and uh, I don't remember how many years it was done, but not, not uh, long after it was done, the uh, settlement along the, uh, the, the manholes started to occur. And as, as a result, uh, right now, it's, it's quite bad. And... Um, what, what do we have in place or moving forward with quality control and making sure that, that these contractors are achieving the minimum requirements? Because uh, a lot of times I think that uh, they, um, they are not, you know, we're not holding their feet to the fire and, and to meet these re minimum requirements. Therefore, we end up with uh, uh, premature failures that will result in our services. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Council Member Silva, you're absolutely right. There needs to be uh, more accountability, not only on the construction side of the project, but on the engineering side of the project. Um, th I, I did go back and take a look at the, the engineering design for that roadway, and it was built within the allowable tolerances. Um, it, unfortunately, the roadway is, is um, very, very flat, and the, the stormwater was unable to make it into the curb lines and into the gutters uh, um, that eventually lead to the underground storm sewer. So yeah, there again, if there's if it's flat and there's some silting up on the gu gutter, it's going to continue to to build up, and so it's it's quality control from the design all the way to construction. And 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 one other thing, and I noticed that it's been a practice of the town to allow a contractor as maybe one of their line items in their bid to choose their own testing lab. And I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I, I believe I've seen that practice. Would it not be better for the, the town to go ahead and hire the testing lab? And that way the, the testing lab is the client of the town and would be looking after the best interests of the town instead of the contractor. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> Sweep, sweeping practices. Baby sweeping in the historic district, we perform th uh, three miles. That, that includes the plaza and, and the surrounding area. Of course, this is weather permitting. Um, three days per week for arterials, uh, two days per week on the collectors. Um, and and I, I might remind the mayor and council that uh, none of these numbers that I'm showing you here, with the exception of the sweeping and snow removal, um, includes Taos Plaza. Um, that That's uh, an animal all of itself that requires further discussion at some at some point after we dialogue with uh, Oscar and Abigail. Um, snow removal practices, we try to maintain a, or yeah, maintain an accumulation of, of, of a two inch limit. Anytime it gets higher than that, we're, we're probably not doing our jobs, but um, we're, I think we're pretty good at that. Uh, mowing practices, three times per month on arterials, two times a month on collectors. And of course, this is through the warmer months of the of the year. Uh, Transit division, we run a seven day service operation, 357 days um, out of the year. Uh, these are 2012 numbers. Uh, 59,770 riders. Uh, they're in broke. They are broken down as follows: in town, 38,799. Towski Valley. 15,127, Taos Express, 2,066, our ADA handy van, 2,782, um, special transportation, which 
are things like uh, the governor's conference, the municipal league, uh, Keystone symposiums, any delegation that comes in from wherever um, that has requests, so we try and accommodate those those uh, requests. Councilmember Peralta. Uh, French, on the Taos Express, uh, what are the routes that that takes? Uh, Mr. Mayor, Councilmember Peralta, the, the Taos Express is from the Guadalupe uh, parking lot, uh, the municipal parking lot, uh, to um, the Rancho's post office and direct to Santa Fe to the railhead downtown and back. Uh, are we using those vans on, on other areas, other, uh, unlike uh, the... Uh, the town uh, permanent loop? Um, there, uh, Mr. Mayor, Council Member Peralta, there's a grant funding um, that is that is specific to the, the in-town service, the Ski Valley service, and the Taos Express. There's different grants that are written for those, um, for those different routes. Um, in the event that for, for instance, since we don't run the Taos Ski Valley, but seasonal, uh, what we'll do is we'll take those buses and we'll start utilizing them on the Taos Express to simply run them so that they don't stay parked in the garage. And, um. The reason I'm asking that question is because this morning I saw the one of the Taos Express <coughs> buses up at the uh, Loma Parda. Yes. Going in and out of the parking lot. Yes, the, uh, Mr. Mayor, Council Member Peralta, the Taos Express, we operate that Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. That was this morning. Yeah, right, so if the, if, if, the, um, if, if the buses aren't being utilized on the Taos Express, we'll use them on the Red Line or, or in town. Or if there's, a, if there's an overflow at the Ski Valley and we need a bus, we'll utilize one of those buses. Okay. No, yeah. uh, we're because I see the handy van going up there, and then I saw the Taos Express today. I said, well. Right, right behind it, yeah. yeah. Well, not behind it, but uh, in, in lieu of it, I guess. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Good enough. Good enough. Okay. Level of service in the fleet division. Uh, we have a preventative maintenance program uh, where two times a year we'll perform preventative maintenance on light trucks and sedans. One time a year we'll. Um, perform it on the dump dump trucks and the transport trucks. Um, the reason this frequency is only once per year is that our operators are required to do their own maintenance when they're utilizing the vehicle. So this goes in for, for uh, things that are a little more major than checking the fluids. Um, three times a week on landfill equipment, which is the compactor, the scraper, and the motor grader. Um, we have a corrective response time, 24-7 uh, immediate response to emergencies, and a two-hour response to non-emergencies. Um, oftentimes, we'll, we will assist with fueling up of, of the engines for the fire department when they have a big fire, or um, we'll, we'll you know, uh, go pick up broke down cars from the PD and stuff, so those are our, our response times. Recycling division. Uh, we run a six day a week operation. We recycle 12 types of, of recyclables. Uh, we process um, an average of 110 tons monthly. Uh, the three drop off sites that were mentioned earlier um, combined it's 2.75 tons per month. Um, and of course we, we uh, maintain our, our, sludge, our sludge run to Rio Rancho from the wastewater treatment facility. Um, since we started this program out, uh, we have experienced a cost savings of oh, about 18.23% from when we were contracting with waste management. So this, and of course, the money stays in the community by, by bringing that under our umbrella. Um, Mr. Mayor? Space for your road surfacing. I'm sorry? Space for your road surfacing. <laughs> States. Thank you, Mayor Cordova. French, talking about the sludge and the savings there, what is our target date for getting our landfill ED approved for land application of the sludge there? Mr. Mayor, Council Member um, Abeta, we've, we've been working on that. We've already gone through one public hearing. 
we need to go through another one. So we're hopeful that by sometime around May or June that we will have approval from NMED to to start utilizing the landfill. And that will save us how much do you estimate at this point from where we're at now um, per year? Mr. Mayor, Council Member Beta, I, I haven't run the numbers on that, but I would imagine that it would be reduced significantly. I believe we budgeted somewhere in the neighborhood of $40,000 for fuel. Um, so that'll be chopped almost by 70% since we're right. traveling seven miles. So he could easily money. save us $30,000 in here. Yes. Okay. Um, and there, there is also an opportunity to, to generate more, f more revenue at the landfill with the treatment facilities in and around the Enchanted Circle. Okay, thank you. Thank Council you, Mr. Member I mean, uh, Council Member Peralta. Yeah. You know, just a question, French, on the uh, <coughs> drop-off points you have here around the town. Yes, sir. Uh, have you experienced contamination? Because when we used to have the drop-off at the, at the uh, post office, and the, we had one other place we had it, and it was just continually contaminated. <coughs> Our recycling stuff when we couldn't we had to take it to the landfill. Yes, uh, back Mr. in the Mayor, days. Yeah, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, I don't know who that is. Right here. <laughs> <laughs> Council, Member Lozano, Council Member Peralta, um, you know, through through an aggressive um, educational program, um, we we have reduced that significantly. Um, the the people over at Town Hall are very good about recycling their product. They know how to separate it and whatnot. So. That comes pretty clean to us. So that's um, not open to the public. That is not open to the public. Um, what is open to the public is over at the library. There's people that simply bring in their magazines and their and their newspapers, and those are dumped. and And if they're if the paper goods are mingled, that's okay. We can still process and um, and get them shipped out and get the, a decent revenue for them. Um, the drop off site at the Dunn parking lot. Um, the, the area merchants are very, very good about separating them. They take their recycling program very seriously. So, um, and we do, mat we do maintain that site uh, three, three times per week. So we don't, we don't ever want to see it get out of control to where it's spilling out of the containment area and stuff. But they're, they're pretty good about separating. And, and what do we pick up at that site? We pick up uh, cardboard. Um, Aluminum cans and uh, glass. One one last question on the glass: Are we uh, using the glass for uh, bedding for sewer lines and water lines or not? We just used to do it for a while. We yes, Councilmember Peralta. We used to do that um, uh, somewhat. Uh, what we would use it more for though is is. Um, to build road bases, um, to fill in depressions, and uh, we have used it for uh, building pads, and and we do have the we, we do have the criteria, you know, the three to one, and that gets us to ninety five percent and mm -hmm. whatever. So, yes, we continue yeah. to utilize it. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Any other comments? Oh, continue. Okay. <laughs> I forgot where I was at, Mr. Mayor. Sorry. Um, <coughs> landfill, uh, weekly maintenance on all of uh, the service roads. Um, basically what that means is as we're filling in the existing um, cell, we continue to build another cell which uh, causes us or forces us to continue to move the service road into the cell. So it's somewhat of a construction project. Uh, we do monthly storm management of the cells that are closed. Basically, we get up there with the motor grader and blade the, the erosion um, in and around the site. Uh, daily, remo daily removal of the overburden material, that's what we use for our daily cover. Um, and litter patrol of, of the state road and the convenience center that is, that is situated at the landfill. Um, if I may, uh, I'd like to share just with, uh, with the council just uh, <laughs> the basic information here. Uh, it costs us about eight hundred thousand dollars to build a new cell, more or less. Yes. And uh, and it's uh, one is coming up in another year or something like that. Uh, about eighteen months off. Yes. Yeah. And so I, I'm just, it's on the annexation route. Obviously, if you apply to take tax <laughs> revenue, 
tax, uh, gross receipts tax to that, and that's $200,000. That's what I'm saying. Yes, thank you, Oscar. Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, th th that discussion has been brought up to the board, and the, um, th they're not opposed to it. They haven't said yes, but they, they haven't said no, and we've only approached them once before. So, um, But anyway, the total acreage over at the landfill is about 230 Just acres. We have 100 acres of disposal site, uh, which has a capacity of 3.1 million cubic yards and an estimated life of 62 years. Um, so we're, we're, we're right on the target, uh, <coughs> Council Member Peralta, with, um, with the permit that was issued 13 years ago, and I know you were intimately involved with that. So um, th th those projections were and are still still very valid. Um, we, we maintain six monitoring wells. Um, the depth of the water to in each one of those is between 234 and 281 feet. And basically we're just testing to see if there's any contaminants that are migrating from the landfill into the, into the drinking water, so. Mr. Mayor, I've got a question for you, French. You know, we had that little fire out at the landfill because somebody took an a uh, ashes and with their wood. After it's ground up and that, what, what do we do to, to uh, recycle that material into, into the land or whatever? Because that's just, you know, it's uh, compost basically at some point in time. Yes, Mr. Mayor, Council Member Peralta. Um, we did have a fire. It was, it was contained fairly quickly and, and uh, burned up so it doesn't migrate through the rest of the landfill. Um, but to answer your question, the mulch that is generated off of off of the, the green waste, uh, we do offer it to the public, although we haven't been very successful with it because it's a dirty product. Mm -hmm. So basically what we do is we load that up into one of our old salt spreaders and spread it all over the closed landfill. And we're trying to promote some type of germination from even weeds would be nice. So. Um, you know, NM, and <laughs> NMD or not NMDOT, but the, the environment department is, uh, is very happy with that practice. And, and of course, it'll eventually compost on its own. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you're using it as, as the final fill? I mean, or a final cover? Uh, no, we're not using that as a final cover. We're just using that as a supplement to, to um, deter erosion and again, to promote some kind of growth mm -hmm. of, of any, any vegetation that we that exists. Okay. Just, just a comment. I imagine it helps with dust control as well. Yes, it does. Yeah, because we have we have no other use for it. We did offer it to NMDOT, but again, um, it didn't meet the spec because it is a dirty product, and mm -hmm. the landfill board chose not to um, take that investment to make it a usable product for it. It just doesn't make sense. Okay, <laughs> strategic overview, our strengths. Uh, we have uh, cross-trained staff. We have 80% um, of the employees have commercial driver's license with a passenger endorsement or better. 40% um, of our staff are certified in landfill, recycling, and or wastewater and water operations. Uh, of course, we have a 24 seven emergency response capabilities. Uh, our weaknesses, uh, we do have increased operational costs as, as the council is, has been um, mulling over that over the la past several months. We have aging infrastructure and sh shrinking federal, state, and local funding. Um, our threats, uh, again, is the aging infrastructure. And what I mean by this is our, our streets, um, some of our fleet, some of our fleet, we we spend a little bit more on, on maintenance <coughs> on a more regular basis. Um, that poses to be a little bit of a problem. And of course, uh, we've outgrown some of our facilities over at the yard. Um, uh, and, and I'm sorry, I should have I should have brought a photograph. We had an old um, an old arch bridge that some of the parts were missing. That was, I think it was purchased by former manager Cordova from some surplus <coughs> somewhere, and we turned it into this uh, into a uh, um, a carport, if you will, to put some of the equipment in. So um, that's that's what I, I was meaning by that. 
uh, and of course increasing gap between expenses and in revenues. Our opportunities are to restructure uh, rates for services offered at the landfill and the transit. Um, we are in the process right now of, of uh, um, presenting that to the landfill board um, and we will come back before the mayor and council for, for the transit side of it for consideration. Um, we will Im be implementing the GIS program and, and an asset management program uh, once we get our GIS um, tech out at Public Works. Um, our funding streams and new partnerships for future projects, which um, Oscar and I have talked about, uh, the regional tra transit district. And this is something that came up uh, when this was presented to the management team. Um, uh, we will, we will, we would like to consider to impact these four commercial developments that would assist us in paying for or designing uh, major intersections within within the corporate limit. Um, I think it's very important that um, that that, that be um, taken into consideration. And um, on that uh, note, uh, friends, yes. <coughs> in uh, <coughs> for development, <coughs> if we have the existing zoning that allows for such development. Mm -hmm. I think it would be unfair then for to burden a developer to for impact fee. But I think if they're requesting up zoning and you know zoning it for something other than what we have prepared or planned, mm -hmm. then I think it's appropriate. Just keep that in mind as we're preparing our development uh, impact fees on that. Uh, Mr. Mayor, of, of course, and, and um, uh, again, this is something that is, is long term and, and would need an enormous amount of dialogue and consideration. Yeah, uh, but yeah, we're, you're going to have to direct us to do that, and of course, we'll be bringing this to you. And yeah, it's it's a big issue; it always is. Yeah. Okay. And of course, uh, working with the planning department to develop some design standards for new development um, that would be a benefit in the long run. Okay, our work plan, strategic focus, and priorities: update our traffic master plan. Um, improve internal tracking systems for service request, requests. Um, our list of uh, projects and, ob and objectives build upon the existing cross training program that we have at Public Works. Again, update <coughs> the, the traffic master plan. Um, this means a lot of different things, not only, not only the development of a map, but um, <coughs> some 20 year projections that show um, <coughs> uh, costs and benefits, and, and I do have that. Um, and implement an asset management program that will include uh, detailed work order systems um, that is linked to our GIS system, uh, our roadway resurfacing and rehabilitation program, which we discussed earlier, and of course to align the public works organization organizational culture with the council direction. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members <coughs> of the council. Thank you. I think I've answered all the questions. Comes. Mr. Mayor, thank you. Uh, Abigail and French, thank you very much for an excellent briefing. One comment and one question. Uh, the comment uh, is more related to public utilities. A few months back, Marietta, we got an award for $1.2 million from the New Mexico Water Trust Board for implementation of water in Weimar. Uh, I know that the summer's already pretty, pretty filled up with a lot of projects. Uh, let's make sure that it's not one-year money and that it's two-year money. And that way we can plan on getting that going maybe spring of the following year so that we don't lose that money. So just a statement. And then number two, I, I see here that you have listed as a project objective the roadway resurfacing. And in another year, we're going to have 80 or 90 percent of our paved roads approaching the marginal area. So we really got to work hard, Oscar, to come up with a viable program that's going to start to systematically and in phases Re restart surfacing these roadways. Uh, whether you're going up Weimar Road to the hospital, where you're going on Salazar Road, whether you're going on Hill Lane, a lot of these roads are rapidly deteriorating, and if we don't have an aggressive program, we're going to be in trouble. So, yes, sir. And you will be getting a five-year CIP capital improvement program budget, along with the operations budget. When you see the budget. And at that time, you'll be seeing these projects. You can tell us what happens this year, what happens the next year. And, uh, and by the way, it's just, it's just, it's all of it's just a banner of money, a lot of money. And uh, I guess in this way, 
the negotiations we have with um, going with the county about lowering our costs for 911 in, in those areas are all part of the plan. If we can, you know, just slink down to what the town really should be paying for its regional effort, that 20%, then I think you'll find a lot, a lot of the resources that we need to just take care of basic business that we, we have. We, uh, and you know, Oscar, if our GRTs continue to decline as we move into the future, Marietta, we may have to look at uh, fee for service for non-town residents, for library, for swimming pool, and other services because we have to provide a service. So you, you'll be getting that proposal as well in the budget, yes, you bet. Okay, any other comments, questions? If not, we'll go to item 10. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Fred, thank you. Uh, I just want to commend French for a job well done in one of the largest departments that the town has and the most uh, critical departments. Uh, job well done, French, appreciate it. Um, <clears throat> Any matters from the mayor and council at this time? See none. Entertain a motion for adjourn. So Wait. moved, Mr. Mayor. Motion and second. second. <laughs> All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, motion aye. carries. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Aye, aye, aye. Aye, aye. <laughs> it is. I mean, they. Uh, yeah.